I feel at a disadvantage. You you guys are both at the on the America's most wanted list. Thank goodness I never made it. I knew when your channel was taken down because all of a sudden I started getting these comments in the comment section. Bro, what's going on with Brett Johnson? I was like, I don't I don't know. Did he get arrested like, again? You'll hire some guy that will hire someone from India right. to do it. And then the not that they're not wonderful people. Um <laughs> you, you you felt the need to say that. I, I, because I'm scared. Oh, I've interviewed TMZ. some guys that I thought weren't going to make it. Like this is <laughs> the life. Of- hey, this is Matt Cox, and I am here with Brett Johnson. I'm here with Wade Williams. Wade hosts and runs the YouTube channel uh, Crime and Entertainment, which I always think of as someone who focuses on uh, mob-related crime stories. Unfortunately. My wife feels she thinks of Wade as the guy that interviews porn stars, which is really? funny because I don't. I mean, I always say my, every time I turn it on, it's always like it, it's always um, uh, mob guys. Anyway, and well, Brett, I'm an shit, I, I but, need to subscribe. <laughs> and <laughs> Brett Johnson. Brett Johnson is what is Boziak uh, always called? What, what do they call it? the the Godfather of cybercrime? That's what they I, say. Okay. The Godfather of Cybercrime. He was number one on the Secret Service's most wanted list. He was on the run multiple times. Do you escape what? One, one time? One? I escaped from prison, yeah. yeah okay. I got that on the record, too. And, um, <laughs> yeah, currently the he runs the YouTube channel, uh, Brett. Is it just Brett Johnson? No, the Brett Johnson Show. The Brett yeah. Johnson Show. And the okay. reason you don't know it is because no one watches it. Well, we're working on that. <laughs> we're working on that. Well, you also got it taken down. I did. I did. You know, <laughs> shouldn't be talking about prostitutes. I should be interviewing porn stars, evidently. Yeah. yeah. Yes. That's a big difference. Uh, they get upset when you confuse the two. I, I, I knew when your um when your channel was taken down because all of a sudden I started getting these comments in the comment section. Bro, what's going on with Brett Johnson? I was like, I don't, I don't know. Did he get arrested again? Yeah, what happened? <laughs> and then, like after a week, I finally checked. I was like, I don't. Why does why does everybody keep saying that? So I checked, and your channel was just gone. Yep. Yeah, they do that. I feel at a disadvantage. You, you guys are both at the on the America's most wanted list, and I never, I never. Thank goodness, I never made it. Not too late. No, the day is not over yet. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> <laughs> it is Monday too. By the way. Let's see. So what I was here's what I was thinking. Here's what I'm proposing is that, you know, maybe once a month we get together and kind of say like, you know, how our channels are doing, how, you know, they're growing, what's working, what's not working, um, you know, like j- just that sort of thing, just in general. Right. Um, I-, I think that's, I would like to do that. I had actually anticipated doing that or plan, you know, wanted to do that when I, rented this house i was planning on doing kind of like an incubator thing and that that didn't work out but i think that this would be good because i think we all have growing channels and and we, uh, listen and all of us have had you know issues i mean you know but you know brett got his channel you know taken down like i mean it was starting to you know it was getting it was starting to get going and yeah. he had started it and he was had a whole plan and then suddenly bam and then it, like youtube youtube just doesn't t- even tell you why yeah They'll demonetize my stuff, you know, or do limited monetization, which might as well be right. It's not monetized, you know. Yeah, right. I've because, got a ton of those. Right, and then you, you, you know, you um, request a review. They review it and they come back and they say, "Yep, it's it needs to be deep, you know, it needs to be limited monetization." But they don't tell you why. They're like, "Oh, look at your agreement." Like, yeah, it, it doesn't make sense because. If if it's one little piece, like I have no problem going and cutting it out. Just tell right. me where it is. You don't even tell me exactly. Just tell me the the the, the uh, give me a range. You know, oh, it's around a uh, uh, one hour and twelve minutes. I'm ready to cut that fucker out. Like I'll track yeah. it down. Just help me. That always bothers me. And I had a video one time. I interviewed a guy named Jay Dobbins, who was an ATF agent that went undercover in the Hell's Angels. And at the time, it was my longest video that I'd ever done, which was around like two and a half hours. Mm -hmm. So I was thinking, cut it into two parts and, you know, release it that way. Well, I cut it into two parts. And then I also wound up releasing the full version. So they let the first part monetize. 
demonetize the second part and then let the full one also get monetized. So I'm like, it's the same fucking video. I don't understand it. Like the same exact video, but you demonetize the second thing. And then sometimes the shorts will do the same thing. Same thing. Be a short to... from a video that's good, but they won't let the short go through. Well, yeah. There you go. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's, uh, it's a, it's, it's definitely a, a quagmire. So, uh, I was gonna say right now, I just interviewed a guy who we, we he came here. We talked about aliens, okay. Bro, al- aliens. That's all we talked about. We didn't talk about politics. We didn't, there was, there was, I don't think we even cussed. I mean, it's hard to cuss when you talk about aliens, but I don't think there was cursing. We certainly didn't talk about anything, uh, anything drug related. It was just about aliens. It right now, limited monetization. Now we have a, like Colby hasn't gone through and tried to figure out what's the problem is, but it makes no sense at all. So, so, anyway. so no idea at all why they're, why they're doing that. No. And I have other ones where, I mean, literally during the, listen, during the interview, I'm like, this is never going to get monetized. I mean, the guy is that just out there saying crazy shit, cussing. I mean, he's talking about, you know, blatantly speaking about drugs, drug transactions. And every time some guy starts talking about meth and, you know, heroin, I'm thinking, oh, God, bro, you're getting way too descriptive. Right. And and then the video comes out and I'm like, and boom, no problem, comes out. Gets twenty thousand views over the next you know month. It's two hours long. Never have a problem. So, do you tell your guests sometimes like to try not to get too descriptive when it comes to like drugs or, or certain things? Because I've never done that. I haven't, but I'm going to start. And see, okay. I, I just started with guests, and I had a guy last week that was a tattoo guy. Uh, served federal, not federal, served state time. So he starts the show. He, he was like, "Hey, do you mind if I smoke?" And I'm like, "No, dude, light it up." Then I paused and I was like what are you smoking? Right. <laughs> he was like, well, man, I, I stopped smoking cigarettes 20 some years ago. Mm. And I'm like, fuck it, do it anyway. And I mean, he lit up, he, he did that. And I, I assume that that is going to get me in trouble at some point. <laughs> I was just thinking, why not? Why not? I just started this channel. Exactly. It's not like if, if it had fifty thousand exactly. subscribers, sure, but I could start another one. Well, and obviously we're not Joe Rogan, but I mean, Rogan used to get high all the time when he was doing his stuff on YouTube. He got high all the time, yeah, and it, it Spotify doesn't seem to care what you do on there, but no. YouTube absolutely does. Yeah. Um, I had I don't know if you guys are, are wrestling fans or familiar with the wrestling, but there was a wrestler called the Godfather back in like the, the attitude era, you know, early 90s, mid 90s. And his gimmick was he was like a, I guess, a pimp. He would come out with the girls and all that. And like his little taglines would be like roll a fatty for this pimp daddy and all that. Well, he's since retired. But he's a very cool guy. And I had him on the show and he's a huge advocate for, you know, we CBD everything and all through like the episode, he would just, you know, light up and take a pump, but that's what he does on his Instagram account and all the time. And they let that go. So okay, I've never, I've never told anybody not to get too descriptive on that, but kind of like what Matt was talking about. Uh, I had an episode with Ignacio Esteban and we started doing serial killer. We were going to do like one a month and just highlight a serial killer. And we've done a guy named Albert fish. And some of the things like, I don't even want to, even Dead skin mask guy is that Albert Fish? No, no, he was like an older guy. He done unspeakable things to okay. people. I'm not like those that. other serial killers. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Well, these this <laughs> not is your friendly. friendly neighborhood serial killer. <laughs> okay, he was Dahmer but worse. If that makes sense. Right. Okay. He, yeah, he was Dahmer but worse. And I was just like, yeah, Kill this was probably of. gonna probably not gonna go. And it went through. I was totally shocked. They even let the short go through which was very descriptive. I figured that was get reported if anything else. But right. Yeah. They let it go through. So I don't understand the algorithm, man. I, I really don't. Yeah. Well, I'm, I, I'm, I don't even try to, I mean, I, I'm, and that's probably why I don't have a shitload of followers like you. <laughs> well, I'm, I'm going to, uh, yeah, from now on, I'm going to actually talk to these guys. I'm going to say, listen, like if you're talking about, you know, whatever the drug is, like mention the drug the first time, and then let's call it like the product. Mm-hmm. You know, let's stick with product after that, 
just because if you're continually saying like, you know, they'll let you get away with it a few times. But you're just right. saying, and some of these guys, it's like, oh my God, like I can't believe how many, this guy won't stop. And, and I don't want to be rude in the middle of it and say, Hey man, can you honestly, yeah. bro, you're getting right. insane here. Uh, <laughs> like, I mean, I've never heard anybody like you can't seem to say a sentence without mentioning that you can't just say the stuff or the something, <laughs> but yeah. Yeah. So I, one of the shows I was planning on doing, and I just started that tonight, as a matter of fact, of, of doing a tour of some of these criminal goods and services that's on sale on Telegram, dark web, marketplaces, things like that. So tonight was stolen cars and uh, uh, skimmers. So are you saying that I should not show things that, you know, drugs that begin with an F or what have you? I, I mean, I would probably say it, you say it once. And then try and just stick with like the product and and so don't show screenshots or take a live tour. I, I wouldn't show screenshots. Like I, I literally, so I had a guy that that had like a grow house, mm -hmm. and I the intro we did a like a really good intro, right? Like a little one minute intro for him, and I had to upload it three or four different times. And the last thing I took out to get it monetized was actually a. Um, some B roll of a grow house. So it ah. will, it, it actually had had a problem with the grow. Like it had, got rid of this. That's okay. This is okay. And then slowly got to a point was like, still something's off. And then I removed that. Boom. It was fine. Okay. And, and it really, it was honestly, it was because it was probably because it was within the first three minutes, you know, it was an intro. Right. Do you so, guys have video on Spotify? I do. You do, oh, do. video do. on Spotify. Yeah. Yeah, I just like got Rogan, out of a thing. Yeah, yeah like I, Rogan's now his videos on. Like if you go to Spotify and play his podcast, a video will actually play, just like YouTube. Yeah, it's it's, it's extremely easy to set up. You can't do, uh, you know, with YouTube, you do the, uh, the SEO keywords, and you you can't do that. You just write every what whatever the show description is. You can put the keywords in there, uh, but it, I mean, it's easy to do, and it. I mean, my engagement, most of my engagement comes from Spotify. Absolutely. Now, did you do that on your own? I have Buzzsprout. That's who distributes okay. all of my audio. But they don't have the capability of doing the video right. there. They only do audio. So did yeah, I you go have through, to um, it is Spotify for podcast. Anchor? Anchor. Anchor. That's who it is. Okay. Yeah, that's, who, that's who we go through. Yeah. All right. See, I might need to look into switching. I go through it's Buzzsprout. It's pretty easy, man. So in, in the beginning, I wasn't even thinking I was going to do video. So I just went to straight Buzzsprout for all audio. And then the right. video kind of came about. And, you know, now this just late in the game. I don't know all the details as far as switching hosts. Do I keep everything? I don't I don't understand what that would do. Well, man, why why are you not doing video and you're interviewing porn stars? No, he's doing video. Yo, I'm doing video now. He has I video didn't start on, out, by the way. All right. Right. He has video on his YouTube. Yeah, just just pull the audio and stick it on spot. Oh, well, or I guess if you could put the video on too. I need to talk to Colby about doing the video. Yeah, because I mean that, that recently became a thing, I guess not too long ago. Maybe when Rogan switched over yeah, somewhere around after. those lines. And I contacted Buzz Sprout and asked him, could I do that? And they said, unfortunately, with their capabilities, they couldn't. It was just audio. So I have all the video. It would be easy to do. Right. I just don't know, being that, like, if I pulled my account from Buzzsprout and moved everything to Anchor, ah. like, what would happen? You know what I'm saying? I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. If I don't it, know. Yeah, that's interesting. I don't know that. So I have to on, find out. On a separate topic, um, Wade and I went to CrimeCon. <laughs> have you ever right. been there? I have not. Because they're not willing to pay my speaking no. fee. <laughs> so, well, I don't well, do this we, shit for free. Well, we didn't just speak. I didn't speak. We just went. Yeah, you yeah. were a, a journalist. Journalist. I'm a journalist. <laughs> yeah. These guys got media passes and I'm up here paying like, you know, full price like a peasant. So sake. explain to me crime con. Is it is it all law enforcement? Is it all fans? It's not what is you it? think. Okay. It, it's really an, I, you know what I thought it was. I figured I'm going to go there and they're going to have like criminals. They're going to have a bunch of mob guys. They're going to have a bunch of guys that maybe committed a, a murder or yeah. dirty police officers that got, went in, got out. They're all selling books. It's right. not what it is at all. It's literally all podcasters. It's all podcasters that are that have pod probably a hundred at least a hundred. You think a hundred or more? It, it was probably a hundred. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Hundred 
podcasters with booths and they're they're like um you know podcasts that are focusing on serial killers mystery murders um let's see uh just sensational murders victims you know voices for the victims you know voices for the for the uh you know voices for the voice for the voiceless or right. you know I, I like the way you do voices for the victims voices well for i just let I, I was talking to this one woman who was a who who did something like you know um, voices for the victims or something. And, and she's telling me like, we go into a deep dive of who the victim was. And she was going on and on and on. And Tyler is my booking agent. And he's like, like, he's trying, you know how Tyler is. He, he, he's like, yeah, we've got a, po- she would be a great guest. And I'm going, no, no, no. <laughs> no. And, and Tyler, you don't want to talk to her about that shit. Yeah. Tyler's <laughs> actually sitting there and I'm, I'm telling, no. like, I've had this conversation with Tyler over and over again, fun crimes, think fun crimes and then she's going on and on and you can hear it in her she she's deeply deeply um entrenched in bringing light to the victims and i'm thinking all i can think of is i'm gonna get 1200 views these people are gonna turn off the fucking thing as quick as possible my guys they don't even want to hear someone say they're sorry about the crime like right they, they you know <laughs> which is and, that's what i'm doing on my show Right. What? Saying you're right. sorry about that? Oh, crime? I've I've got guys on. If they don't accept responsibility, I'm not talking to you. Oh <laughs> I don't want to hear you brag about your crime. Oh man. <laughs> yeah. 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 I, I'm not trying to get viewership, as you can I, tell. I yeah. Yeah, I do have one or two guys that will say, you know, they'll say something towards the end, but I always tell them like, look, bro, just don't please don't apologize the whole fucking the whole time. Okay. Tell yeah, me the story. Nobody wants to hear you apologize. Hold on. At, toward the end, you can talk about how it ruined your life and how you feel bad and what you're doing now. But give me an, at least an hour of your story without right. apologizing. Well, you see, you get that woman on there. She's going to bring. She's going to look up every single victim that you've had, and she's going to parade them in front of you. I mean, all right. <laughs> and well, you're going to have was, 1,200 viewers. It was cool for me just because when I first started, I didn't really even start listening to podcasts until about two and a half years ago, right before I start, decided to start my own. So okay. a few of the guys, like, it was cool putting faces to the names, but kind of like what Matt said, it's all strictly true crime. So like cold cases, individual cases, some of them would highlight missing persons. Some of them would okay. do deep dives into one specific thing and all that, but that's what it was. Now they did have some different speakers. Like I think they had the defense attorney that was going up against uh, Alex Murdoch. He was speaking in a room. So they had schedules set up on top of what they call podcast row to where people would rotate in and out speaking. So Nancy Grace was there. She spoke with a few other people. I I won't give my opinion on her. her. Oh my God. Right. (laughs) I just, I mean, Jeffrey I just hope that she could no longer, you know, breed. Uh, well, <laughs> I'm pretty sure those days have been gone. Well, what? I, I'm not sure she had a lot of offers. Um, <laughs> so, the what, what was uh, what was his name? The guy we interviewed, Jeffrey Jeffrey Deskovic. He done 16 okay. years in prison for a crime he didn't commit, and then he got out. Um, there was a documentary, a short documentary made. Uh, that won some awards. And then he eventually went back to law school, became a lawyer and nice. helped get another guy free who showed up that Saturday. I've had him on the channel as well. He was in jail for 23 years for a murder. He didn't commit or two murders. Lord, actually. Man. Yeah. And last December was like his first December out. So he was there and I got to meet both. I'd had them both on. I think Matt had Jeffrey on, mm-hmm. but that was kind of cool to meet them. So they spoke, you know, for an hour and right. it just kind of rotated different people. I want to say they had somebody tied into like the BTK killings. So it could be a cop that investigated it or a lawyer that pushed for it or something like that. They had a, a bunch of different stuff you could do. So, but, so is it, is it basically just kumbaya for podcasters? Yes. Yes. Okay. Yes. What are they trying to sell? Anything? I think they're, I think they're making their money off of booths yeah, and, okay. um, and people are paying $350 just to show up. I mean, unless you're media. Yeah. Unless you're, and unless you're you, the journalist. And, yeah. uh, um, I did get a coupon code. Well, everyone loves a coupon. Yeah. So, so we, I, I, we're thinking next year, I'm going to try and become a speaker for free. I want to try and get a, a, I'm going to try and get a booth for free. 
I I'll figure give you a booth for free. Yeah, give me a booth that. for free. Like, give me some yeah. coupons and whatever. And let me, you know, let me get in for free. Let me get a booth for free, and let me, and I'll talk for free. And then I, I think we, we, I, I need to, we need to get some criminals in there. I mean, these people. I don't listen. I it's like ninety percent women. Yeah, yeah. That's, but if they're all, if all ninety percent are like Nancy Grace, they're they're mm. probably angry. I don't know. I didn't, I, I didn't talk to too many. I mean, I, I. I most men that were there were looked like there was a few that was there because they were into it, but most of them like they were drugged there with their wives. Yeah, that yeah, makes they, sense. That no, makes I'm telling you, maybe ten or fifteen percent. Well, male. look, you, you know, you're talking about uh, you're talking about a booth. Um, I can tell you in no uncertain terms, if you agree to speak free, especially with your background and things like that, both of you, mm-hmm. if you agree to speak free at any event, just to give you a booth, they're going to sign you on. You can bet on that. Well, I've already submitted to speak. For the next year, I submitted for this one, but I think they already had everybody booked up, and I didn't really know about it till about okay. two or three months ago. Right, so it was kind of late in the game. So the contact that I had, I've already submitted to speak for next year, and even if I don't get submit uh, picked up as a speaker, I at least did want a booth and in, in podcast show. Plus, it's in Nashville, and Nashville's a pretty cool place. It's a good town. Yeah, yes, it is. Yeah, I know. I stole three point five million there. Well, it's a they're very, very good town for you. They're very trusting. <laughs> but even in that event, like they had something that was solely for like the podcasters at kind of like in the, the later hours of the day, like from seven to nine or something like that. And I went up there and we had some friends, friends of ours that was there and they was like, just come up. And I was like, I said, I think you have to be a podcaster to get up here. And he's like, well, just come with us. So I went up and kind of walked in between them and walked straight on in. And this thing was like free food, free drinks, alcohol, whatever you wanted, you know. And I, I text Matt, I'm like, hey, you might want to come on up here, you know. <laughs> it's uh, everything, they're just giving everything away up here. <laughs> and the women got prettier as the night went on. <laughs> well, my wife wants to know something, Wade. Yes. What's going on? Does Jess have a Rhonda Ross, what is it? Rousey. Rousey, Rousey thing going on. Uh, what with her or a look? A look, the look. No, he's he's struggling. It's a no. It's a no. No, I mean they're they they don't they're different hair colors and stuff like that. But the attitude, yes, if that's what she's referring to. <laughs> okay, good, good to know. All right, we're good, we're good. That's what she's going for. She's decided she's going to get a Ronda Rousey body within the next few months. And then okay. to kick your ass. Oh, okay. so you're looking at, but you're asking about body. I didn't know whether you yeah, meant look, hair talking. color, <laughs> presence, stage presence. I don't know what you're talking about. Of course, the alarm went off at four o'clock this morning and she just rolled over and went back to bed. We didn't go to the gym. <laughs> like I was like, I don't know, like for day, day one of, <laughs> of training, got the shit. See, I knew that because y'all order salads when we went out to eat. And I was like, give me the most unhealthiest thing you got on the menu yeah, there, at the, yeah, wherever that yeah. place was. We yeah. well, baby steps. <laughs> Take the salad and feed to whatever you're going to bring to the table that I'm going to eat. This is a pro- yeah. Protein drinks, they don't they don't taste that bad if you put a couple of scoops of ice cream in them. <laughs> or a little vodka. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> um, okay, so what was I going to say? So, Wade, when... Uh, well, uh, Wade, when did you start your channel? I started it roughly two years ago around July. So my I, my two year anniversary just passed. So when okay. was that? That's 2020, 2020, I guess, 2021. I don't know. I'm horrible at math. Roughly a little over two years. And when I was talking earlier, I was only planning on doing audio, like doing video and actually interviews never really entered my mind. Um, and I thought about doing a true crime channel strict, like focusing on cases, kind of like what we talked about earlier, but I knew I didn't have the capability to do a good one, like to do good ones. Like some of those people that were there, I mean, like they get freedom of information acts, like they get, you know, they go deep and I knew I didn't have the time nor the know-how to do that. So I was trying to figure out how to kind of brand it to where I could talk about stuff that I knew And the guy was like, so you want to do true crime? And I'm like, yeah, but I also want to do, you know, entertainment stuff like movies and stuff like that. And he's like, so you want to do crime and entertainment? I'm like, that's not a bad name. (laughs) That's that's pretty good. That's that's kind of what it is. So the first like five or six episodes that we did was just straight audio. And then I got a chance to interview Lilo Brancato, who was in the Bronx Tale. 
Okay. He was C, if you remember that movie, the older version. Okay. Um, and he had an interesting story, uh, you know, big Hollywood actor, you know, top of the world, pretty much had everything given to him, including a lot of drugs. And he wound up getting hooked on the H word and was involved in a shooting with an off-duty police officer, wound up going to prison for a while. Um, the police officer died as a result of that. And it was, it was a crazy story, but like that was my first ever interview that I did. And then after that, it just kind of, kind of like anything else, you know, slowly start to build up a little reputation. I would ask people, you know, Hey, if you know anybody else that wants to come on and that kind of started the ball rolling. And then I just forgot about audio and haven't went back to it since it's just been interviews right. every week. <clears throat> so you were pretty quick transitioning to that interview thing. Yeah, pretty quick. Um, I went with him and there was a lot of people that I'd seen, like the, the second guy I interviewed and I, I talked to Matt about him was uh, Brian O'Day. And I remembered I seen a show called Masterminds. Right. They used to come on. I forgot what channel, but it used to come it's on. It's like all on Court TV or something like that. So, something along those lines. Yeah. And it was like people that done, you know, these amazing capers and almost got away with it. You know, usually they all wind up getting caught over something very simple. And I just remember that case and I actually had his book. So I just Instagrammed him and, you know, talked to him, told him I was doing a channel. And I was like, you know, would you come on? He's like, if you'll do me one favor, I'll come on. He's like, just go to any homeless shelter and make a donation. He's oh, like, wow. I don't care if it's five bucks. He's like, make a donation to like a recovering addict and I'll do your show. And I'm like, done. And he was my second. And then it just kind of started snowballing from there. And, you know, I've had Tommy Chong on, which was very cool. I uh, grew up watching Tommy Chong, um, Tom Sizemore, the actor that was in like Natural Born Killers and Saving Private Ryan and Heat. Uh, mm -hmm. He since passed away. So that was kind of weird, like to have somebody on this passed away. Have you guys, you ever had that, Matt? No, no, not yet. Of course, I don't. Not yet, but he, he's got his fingers keep, crossed. I don't keep up with anybody, though. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, like some people, yeah, I can see where you wouldn't keep up with him. This guy was a movie star. So when I, he, I have, I've interviewed TNT. some guys that I thought weren't going to make it. Like this be <laughs> the life this guy's living. <laughs> you know, they say, hey, we should do another one. I'm thinking <laughs> you ain't going to be here. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so. But yeah, well, well, Tom was a little different. He was a movie star. So when he went, it was all over TMZ and, you know, every news outlet because he was a big, you know, motion picture star. So right. that one was very a talented bad. guy. He was. He was. Well, I mean, and he battled, you know, addictions and he he spoke very openly about that. But uh, he was just like he said, that was the, the movie business is what drove him because he's like when you're on a movie, you know, working with Al Pacino, Robert De Niro, Tom Hanks, Steven Spielberg, Michael Mann. Like I'm, I would never high or anything while I was working. He's like, but then you finish the movie and it's six or eight months before you do another one. Right. What can you do in your normal life in those six to eight months that elevates you to that type of level? And he chose to, you know, follow addiction. Right. Um, yeah, I had O'Day on. You gave me O'Day, right? Yeah. Yeah. He was really great. Cool yeah. He was yeah. great. Great storyteller. Um. So what what are your what are your subscribers at now? I'm almost at six thousand, I think. I'm like five point okay. nine or something like that, All and right. it's it's grown up a bunch in the last couple of years. Because when I started going on shows, like I, Matt's was the first show that I'd ever went on, and then I went on Danny's, and then I just done Sean Atwood uh, not Atwood. too long ago, yeah. and then I've I've already done a few more, but those haven't come out yet. So okay. you know, whenever they put theirs out, there's some pretty decent platforms too. And I don't get mad at people like the one guy I'd done probably four months ago. And I seen him at crime con and he's like, I haven't forgot about you, man. And I'm just like, look, I know how it is. Sometimes I let months go by. I'll forget. I'll forget that I had it, you know? <laughs> and sometimes it's timing. I let things sit for a while. Like I had a lady and I think Matt might've interviewed her, Carol Hellerman, who was in, uh, she was a stewardess on nine 11. Oh, oh yeah. Yeah. Oh, she yeah. gave a lot of inside information on things that they'd done for nine 11. I probably recorded that interview four months ago, but I saved it until 9-11. I got gotcha. you. I got gotcha. you. She has her version of 9-11. Yeah, 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 yeah. She has her version of, of what happened. Is it that jet fuel too. doesn't melt steel beams? No, it's uh, okay. She <laughs> goes ah! in the airport. Yeah, okay. she's got the whole there's there was multiple planes and, you know, that uh, were supposed to have taken off that they thwarted the, you know, the those planes from taking off. Like, it, it's all these things that I don't know why the. 
why if they had thwarted multiple planes being involved, then why wouldn't they tell us that? You know what I'm saying? It's, it's she's got a whole conspiracy theory. And, well, and TMZ I understand, did come out with that one called the Fifth Plane. I agree. There were there. There's you know, I don't know if it's a series of coincidences or what, but whatever. She she was a well, decent interview. Okay, so so let me ask you. You you mentioned aliens. Now we're talking 9/11. So and I've had I've had my share of people who have reached out to me, and I've wanted to discuss things that I was like, I just can't even talk to you. So <laughs> my question is, you bring these people on with the conspiracy theories, and I don't care whether you believe them or not, you're, you're giving them a platform. How does the platform receive that? Now, I know that we can't mention drug names, but how, how is YouTube with these conspiracy theories and things? T- typically, they're, they've been okay. Well, see, what do you think, Wade? I mean, have you had any problems with I haven't. Um, I've had a few with the conspiracies. Uh, I've talked with Ignacio about some 9 11 stuff. Um, And then I had Bill Burns on, who was obviously really big in the. He was in that show Ancient Aliens on the History Channel, and he's wrote a bunch of stuff about aliens, some books. I haven't got any kickback. Did it get any? No, I think think Brett means like, were were those videos limited on monetization? Yeah. Those weren't no. 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 Typically, so the okay. ones that I have that get demonetized are when politics are brought up. So I try to steer away from politics if possible. Yeah. And if I don't, then I go into it knowing that this video is probably not going to make anything. Um, All right. And then sometimes the porn stars will get demonetized. <laughs> That's crazy. Depending, but even that is like. Like I'm fixing to drop one here with a, a a chick that's from the Midwest. She calls herself the Midwestern MILF. Oh um, yeah, and, uh, very talented young lady. Uh, yeah, her her name is <laughs> Lindsay Ryder, and it, she got pretty graphic on some stuff that she did, and everything went through, good to go, fully monetized, no problems. I had another one on that was probably the most tamest porn star I'd ever had on. I don't even know if we brought up you know the business very much. Right. It was more or less just other stuff, and it didn't get monetized. So the, again, the the rhyme or reason, I don't know if it's if it's a computer program or for somebody actually listening to it. I, yeah. I don't I don't know, but do you, some of it don't make sense. Do you um, dispute? Oh yeah. Oh, okay. Like, do you win the disputes? Most of the time. Okay. Because usually, I very rarely get a video. Even sometimes when I do football picks, I think they just maybe label me as like request or review everything this guy puts up but i do a show every week with a guy named anthony Arlotta, and we just pick football picks for the week okay. who we think is going to win that's it we don't talk about you know drugs or mob or, or nothing it's just straight sports and when i put it up it automatically not monetized have to dispute it and usually those are resolved in a couple of days sometimes some of them take up to a week oh wow yeah well i uh- how many videos are you putting out a week? I only do well. I do one main interview. Me and him are starting to do those once a week. Um, so so outside of football season, just one. Okay. Now, if it depends, if it's a certain situation or something that kind of fits in with a weekend, I might drop another one. But typically, my regular schedule is I drop one a week, usually on Sunday. Okay. <clears throat> so are weekends a better day to drop? Because I'm dropping Tuesday at eight a.m. Say, I don't know. I've just, okay. I started with Sunday and then every now and again, if I get tied up, sometimes I might not drop it till Monday morning. It's not a set schedule, but for the most part, it's on Sunday around like midday. Okay. Yeah. Sunday is a good day to, to drop videos, especially midday. Okay. Yeah. Like midday anytime is like around 12 or one. Yep. That's when that's Colby drops. Cause that's when I think the most people are kind of on YouTube mm-hmm. for, for the longest period of time. Cause if you drop it at night, you might get a spike. But very quickly it drops off. Yeah, because they're gonna go to bed or whatever. Right. And yeah, right. that, so Sunday here I come. Right. Because you know, think and think about it too, at twelve o'clock here is seven o'clock, you know, in, in law. So people are getting up. So they're that's right. kind of like the when it starts to pick up throughout the day. Mm-hmm. So that's when Colby drops all of ours around twelve or or or, or one ish. Okay. Um, yeah, I was gonna say, and, and this is just I mean, I, I've seen some videos and like to me dropping and I know why I'm telling you this, like I'm an expert, um, <laughs> but but I was going to say like you're you're doing crime and entertainment and then you're throwing football in there. 
You feel like that's well, part of the entertainment? That's part of the entertainment. And depending on what you look at, the, the guy's background is he was a former mob guy from Springfield area, Massachusetts, and he was a huge bookmaker. So the name oh, of the okay. show is called the better and the bookmaker, him being the bookmaker, me being the better. And you think maybe that's why it's not monetized a lot out of the yeah. game. They let it go monetized. They do let okay. it. I mean, after a review, I haven't had any of those not go. Okay. And it was just something to kind of throw in there for football season, just a little something extra for, for those guys. And it may not be something I continue. It's just something I threw in there for, for this football season. So how accurate have you guys been so far? We can go on to the next uh, question if you want. <laughs> <laughs> like the best week I would have had was this week when we went to CrimeCon and we couldn't do one because we usually recorded on Thursdays. And I was trying to get down there to Orlando and I'm just like, yeah, we're going to go on next week and say, well, we had all the winners and everybody's going to believe us. Uh, no, nobody wins at that. I don't care who you are. All if right. you did, you just wouldn't be giving them away. You'd be keeping them to yourself. Um, do you remember pagers, right? Oh, so, yeah. Yeah. so I had a buddy that used to bet on, you know, they would, you would call and you'd leave your pick mm -hmm. and he figured out with his bookie, if he called to leave his pick before, you know, the cutoff and he just kept hitting the button to, you know, redo it, that it recorded the timestamp as when he originally called. And he would just hit it and hit it and hit it and hit it. And so whatever it was, you know, an hour, two hours, three hours, <laughs> he knew. Then he'd leave his pick. He, he said he, he did it for like, you know, a little here, a little. He said, I got greedy after about six months. And the guy like cut him off. And he said, like, so, yeah. Anyway, I've thought, heard of that happening. Bookies will cut people off for winning. I've heard of yeah, that. Break their legs. You know, I'm sure well, if he knew why it would have been much. Well, they usually break your legs if you're losing and, yeah. and you don't pay. But for winning, yeah, they just tell you to go somewhere else, take your action else. But see, that's the thing. Like nowadays, though, that used to be a huge racket for not even mob guys, but anybody. Like I think every town had a local bookie. Yeah. But now that's almost getting obsolete because you have all the DraftKings and fan duels. And, you know, I think Logan Paul's even got something now that he's advertising. I mean, every football game that's you know, two or three advertisements where you can go and gamble. People are hitting these ten dollar parlays with fifteen legs and win, right. you know, a hundred grand for risking ten bucks. So everybody's doing it. Jesus. Yeah. So Wade, um, Wade, sorry, Brett. When, when, when did you start your channel over again? Oh, dude. So uh, I was up to four thousand subscribers, as you know. I'd been on Danny's. I'd been on your show. I'd been on Lex Friedman. I'd been on Megan Kelly, and so I mean, it was it was growing very well at that point in time. And then I decided I was going to put out that sugar daddy prostitute episode. <laughs> <laughs> no. I was promptly banned. So, so they I took your whole channel down for that. I'm sorry to interrupt. Took but they the, took, your whole took the entire channel down, and um, I mean, banned me completely. And now, now the show is owned by my wife and uh, that's it's her account well so, he he was he, he's neglecting to say one thing he was scrolling through like the site and there were and unbeknownst to him and didn't just didn't realize that naked pictures there were, were some banner ads yeah. Of some women of the night that and were the offering stuff that your porn stars talk about. Right. Mm -hmm. And the algorithm caught it and yes. said, oh, no. Yes. <laughs> oh, no. Yes, it, they, they, you know, they were talking about, you know, various liquids and instruments. <laughs> you, would, you would think they would have just taken the video down and given you a strike. Man, I, I raised complete. I, I, I raised hell. I begged. You know, I'm in cybersecurity, so I know everyone on the planet. I, I contacted people at friggin' YouTube, everything else, and it was still, nope, can't help you. So I relaunched the show. I believe I relaunched that uh, December. And, um, you know, just picked up where I left off with the with the episode count and everything else. Like tomorrow is episode 89. Um, it was just me talking to people until you one morning you give me a call because you've got a presentation and I'm, I'm telling you what to do and, and, and you're going to be fine and everything. And then you say, Brett, you need to talk to criminals. And I'm like, Matt, I don't want to talk to criminals. <laughs> I'm talking to criminals. I don't want to talk to anybody else. So 
I started as, and I came up with this idea called prison politics because, again, politics, I'm not looking to make any money on my show at all, evidently. But um, it's, it's the show now is I, I alter, I, I do the solo episodes still, but I alternate interview weeks between a felon one week and then the next week I've got law enforcement, security professionals, something like that. And um, honestly, dude, I mean, it's I've got eighteen hundred and I think eleven subscribers now. I've grown uh, three hundred like in the past two weeks, but um, for me, honestly, man, it's it's um, the show I was planning on talking about politics, and it's changed completely. Now it's it's talking about the prison experience, about the hardships of getting out, all that stuff that your viewers don't want to listen to is exactly what the hell I'm talking about. Um, <laughs> you know, it's it, it talks about that. I've got a guy on. Uh, on tomorrow, his name is David Seymour. He uh, he served time on some meth charges, and um, so he you know he's trying to turn his life around. I was talking to him on the show, and he was like, "I want to be a sports broadcaster," and he's going to school for broadcasting. I'm like, "Well, dude, you can start a YouTube channel right now." And he was like, "No, I don't want to do that. I want to do that." Well, the dude listened to me, started his his, his YouTube channel like last week. He's only got like three videos out. You can tell he's brand new, but you know, if I'm making a difference like that. And showing that, uh, you know, former criminals are human beings, law enforcement, all those cops that everybody's trying to put down, they're human beings, too. I mean, that to me, that brings a lot of value that that makes me a better person. Um, I'd love to make money. <laughs> but, right. you know, at the end of the day, this, I think this is it's important monetized, to monetize, right? Is it? I've, I've not clicked monetize yet. I, I, I'm going to. I keep threatening to. But um, so, I want to get back to that 4,000 viewers that I had. Oh, my God. Listen, <laughs> here's the thing. And here's what what here's here's the problem with not clicking the button yet is that, first of all, you know, they lowered it, right? Like it's 3,000. Yeah, it's 3,000 hours and 500 subscribers. Now I've got a shit ton of hours. Yeah. You which should be to, more than that. Which Yeah, to, yeah it used to be 4,000 and 1,000. So to me, it's like you should be making it harder, not easier. Right. Yeah. But keep in mind, too, that. It's the reason it's important to get monetized is even if you say, no, I don't want the commercial showing up. I don't want the The truth is, which video would YouTube push harder? The one where they're going to make money on it or the one where they're not? That makes sense. You want to get monetized because it get, it may, it forces them to say, let's push this guy's video. People with, you know, pe- buyers like my guys that watch my my stuff. Like I don't get subscribe, I don't get um sponsors. Sometimes I get a sponsor. Like I get a sponsor here and there, but mm-hmm. guys are like, bro, you should have big time sponsors. But if you, I'm sure from from YouTube's uh, analytics and marketing, I don't fit a great demographic. My guys right. don't buy anything, right? You know, most of my guys work at Tire Kingdom. They work at they 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 drive a they drive a forklift or Your they main drive demographic a, is Tire Kingdom. It, it is. It's it's blue collar guys. Blue collar you know guys. I mean? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. You know, which is great. Like I love my demographic, but that's right. not going to get me. Uh, that's not State Farm's not going to come and and give me a sponsorship. Well, so now, are me, you are you on Spotify or not? I am on Spotify. And you're still not doing sponsors on Spotify either. Um, I think we are doing one on Spotify, but I was okay. just thinking of YouTube. Right. And I don't even do it. Like Colby reads it. I can't read, Brett. I'm I mean I, I, I get, can't read. I was I was too busy committing fraud to learn how to read. The, the the few times that I've done, you know, read them off, it, the look on on, you know, first of all, it takes <laughs> it takes me ten times to do it. And I have to do it in little batches. Like I have to read like three sentences and then do the next three. And the look on the Colby's just like embarrassed for me. You ever have somebody look at you and like they they look at you like, oh, yeah, every, so, every day, it's so sad. Oh, <laughs> look at him trying, you know. So I, I anyway, um, you know, I'll, I'll I'll make an effort, but uh, yeah, we don't. I don't get a lot of good sponsors. So to me, like getting getting AdSense is huge. That that's why my videos, I like to do an hour, two hour video, right. Plus, I, I like to kind of feather out the you know the story anyway like really you know where were you where did you come from what you know like what contributed to the whole thing but why yeah, if there? i was you i would get monetized i'll do that I'll, I'll click that button tomorrow 
roll that die so that YouTube looks at my videos, especially this one I'm, I released tonight regarding stolen cars and skimmers and how to buy them. <laughs> See, I, I think that's started, where you that's where you fucked up <clears throat> the, how to buy them <laughs> well i told him I, like the stolen car is completely fake the skimmers yeah you can pick up skimmers online when i first started my show that's when i realized like the views didn't necessarily reflect or they weren't accurate as far as to watch hours because i right. drop a video that was you know, an hour long and it got two or 3000 views. So I'm thinking, all right, well, I should be monetized now. And then I go look in the actual watch hours are much, much less. Right. And, you know, and plus two, I didn't have a name when I started. So I, I essentially started from scratch. Like Matt, you know, had a name. People at least knew who he was. And, you know, I'd never been on anyone's show when I come on. So I had to start from zilch, but right. I use those. Uh, I use Facebook and all of the groups that I was in for like mob related content and Sopranos related content. I interviewed like six people off the Sopranos TV show. Nice. So when I would get those and I would cut the clips up, I would share that to all those groups. So you're talking 30 something groups. I would share clips from anybody that was in anything with Sopranos or anybody that was in anything with the mob or, or anything related to that. So it got it out there and that's really how I kind of done it to start with. And then I started doing things outside of just, I didn't want to get boxed into just the mob stuff. So then I started doing, you know, drug smugglers and, and everything else, but that's kind of how I helped do mine. And I still do that to this day, depending on what, you know, it may be used for Facebook as a advertising tool. Right. You just started doing the, doing TikToks too, right? I, I was doing them in the beginning and then somehow or another, I got locked out of my password or locked out of my account because I had like mine, my personal, and then I had the one for the show. And then I got locked out of the one for the show. Couldn't figure out how to get back in it. Didn't feel like starting a new one and redoing them. So I was just like the hell with it. And then finally I just sat down one day, figured out what it was, figured out how to get back into it. And then, yeah, you actually kind of gave me, some pointers on how to do better shorts and now things look like that. I actually right. did several shorts for him. Yes. I, yeah. You I, did. Like, nice. Nice. Like I looked at, and he didn't ask for him. I just looked at, uh, I was looking through some of his shows and I was like, bro, like he's got like, <laughs> this guy's great. Like, like I'm saying like the, you know what I'm saying? Like the guy he was interviewing was, I mean, he was, he was out of central casting for a while. <laughs> yeah, he was. <laughs> and, he, you know, and I told him, I told him, you guys, the whole thing. And I was like, oh, this guy, he's smoking like a cigar. And he's, you know, and I told Henry Hill, I'll kill you is what I'll do. I'll kill you. you know, I was like, oh, man, this guy. So I, I put together, I put together a couple of shorts and just sent them to him and said, bro, you got to post these. Like, check these out. This is what you should be doing. And he posted them. And, and you know, the worst thing about TikTok or TikTok. The worst or, thing? Yeah, the, well, I'm saying TikTok or shorts is that you'll post something, it does nothing. You post something else, it does nothing. You post one that's half-assed and it gets, you know, 20,000 uh, views. You post another one, doesn't do well, another one. You know, if but if you keep posting, then suddenly it will, you'll start posting stuff and it'll get half a million, okay. 300,000, a million. And then your channel starts blowing, you know, you get all these all of that kind of, you know, it becomes, you know, it's a funnel, starts right. funneling everybody toward your channel. And I could see when my stuff gets 200, 300,000 views, you can literally see over that week, you can, you can sit there and just watch your subscribers go up. Okay. And after you get 10,000 followers on TikTok, you can put a link directly to your YouTube channel. So that yeah. was what I was going to ask. So, and I've not started uh, TikToking. I've got like 30 shorts made that I'm processing through and, and putting end tags on and things like that. But you you don't tag, you're not able to tag initially the subscriber link when you start out? No. Okay. So you just mentioned yeah. that, hey, I'm, I'm Matt Cox on YouTube and they find you like that? I mean, you can, you can just go in and leave like a comment. Okay. in there like you could always leave comments in there as the right. you know obviously as the person who owns they know you're the the person that owns the thing and just right. throw in the link or say hey check out the full video or even on tiktok when you write it out mm-hmm. you can leave i think you could leave the link in that to the video or at least you can leave the link to the youtube channel you know check out full interview on you know on youtube and then put the gotcha. link to your channel okay okay but to me, it, you know, it's having it right under the TikTok or the symbol for your channel and having the 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 link to your channel and clicking it. 
Right. Um, right. And look, you always get, listen, I literally have had links, the link on the TikTok account and in the video. And I'm telling people, you still have these guys in the comment section section saying, where can I watch the full video? <laughs> what is this too? And it's like, Oh man, like, I don't need you as a, as a viewer. That's you're those tire problem. king people. Yeah. You're a problem. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, I, I definitely, yeah, you got to start a, you have to start a, um, plus you have to start one anyway, because if you go on TikTok and put your name in, people are already cutting you up. You're already all over TikTok. Yeah, I know. And I've got the, the damn book is out next year. Uh, we're, we're, the proposal goes out this week for sale. UTA is expecting big things from that. So, I mean, yeah, I need to, I need to get on TikTok. Absolutely. Yeah. You might not want to yeah. disappoint them. <laughs> you might, <not, laughs> like, right. might want to go ahead and it's like, who is this son of a bitch? Yeah. <laughs> They're probably going to expect you to pull some weight. Probably. So, uh, yeah, I definitely, I definitely would do, would do that. Sorry. Uh, do you do your own editing? I, I do my own editing for the show. And, um, you know, you, if you've seen the show, you, you basically know it's one take. Yeah. You know, oh yeah. That's how mine is. It's one take. Yeah. <laughs> I'll cut the beginning and the end. Other than that, it's one take. That's my edit. So uh, I had I, I was talking to a guy. Um, uh, his name? What was his name? Oh, I forgot his name. He, they called him Animal in prison because he bit a guy's nose off. Yeah. Served thirty two years in Angola. I heard some feelings once. Yeah, and and they <laughs> created this term for the guy. The term is called criminal menopause. And menopause. It's criminal menopause. It's the age at which a criminal no longer wants to commit crime. So um, they let him out and he, he was talking to me. I got to say he was he was absolutely great. I mean, he, just a fascinating guy. And you could tell, I mean, I'm not sure how contrite he was, but, you know, he, it was, he was not going to commit crime anymore. He was too old to do that. But um, he asked me, he was like, hey, man, uh, you know, if you if you don't edit this, it should be a pretty good show. And I was like, dude, you just don't understand. I don't edit <laughs> whatever you say is going up. <laughs> so. Yeah, I, I we barely ever edit unless unless somebody says, you know, hey, can you can you get rid of that? Can you cut that? I usually tell people beforehand if they're like, hey, man, so you guys are going to edit this. Right. And I'm like, probably not, bro. Right. Like, don't yeah. say anything. Yeah. Don't say anything. You don't want to go up. So. And, and you were talking at the beginning, and, and I know I'm going to get somebody like that before long, uh, of some someone that's going to continue to mention the drug of choice or right. use very colorful language over and over and over. Do you Has there, has there ever been a show that you just have not aired because of that? Um, no, I think there's been some where Colby has gone and bleeped out some of them. Okay. You know. Which is funny. We had one where we we beeped. I mean, just the, like it was just beep, 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 beep. I was like oh, constantly, <laughs> constantly. And people were like, you know, some people, were, of course, they're you can't, you, know, you just can't please everybody. Some people are like, man, all that beeping is, man, what the hell? What's the problem? What, you know, and then there's other people who are like, bro, it was comical how much you had to yeah. beep this guy. Like it was killing me. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, I, I don't think we haven't had one like that. I, if it was that bad, I probably would have said something. Okay. And a lot of people are, are you know, they understand going in. They'll, they'll say, "Can you know? Hey, can I cuss?" I'm like, "Yeah, you can cuss." Like, try not to get crazy, but right. Yeah, you know. don't uh, go casino on me over here. Yeah, there you go. See, that's the one <laughs> thing about <laughs> wait, my wait, people. Wait. Remember yeah. Seth, <laughs> Seth, <Listen>. and Seth. <laughs> we had we had <laughs> Seth Ferrante. I have to say his whole name. <laughs> Seth is he's he's a aggressive and aggressive. I mean, we listen we were eating i don't and he, he has no clue he to this day if he was not that he'll, not that he'll watch not that anybody watches my stuff but it, it not that he's gonna watch it but he we had dinner with him what a couple two three times right yeah well i know y'all had breakfast one morning uh with there but we had dinner the first night even then i think the guy at the table next door is like hurried up and just ate and got and took off <laughs> because he's so aggressive and he cusses you know and i fucking told that motherfucker i said like, oh, you know, who the fuck do you think well, i don't put my fucking self in that in that kind of fucking position fucking fuck those guys you know fuck them man who they fucking think they are and it's like bro like well, this is a family place like there people are <laughs> what is sunday brunch you can't do this people's kids are doing like earmuffs you know their <laughs> parents are screaming earmuffs you know, it was bad, and he did it. He did it at at every, every place we ate. And at one point, I I turned to him. I said, "Bro, you, I'm thinking maybe you should get back on 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 the marijuana." 
Because <laughs> he was telling us about how he's not smoking marijuana. I was like, I don't think that's a good idea. <laughs> Just for society. <laughs> So let, let me buy you some. I have got it. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, yeah. So I, yeah, he, he I, I can't have him on again until he's back on, back on the <laughs> something. So, have- so, and, and here's the other thing. So, uh, and, and at some point I've got to bring people in studio to talk to them. So how do you work that? I mean, is it difficult to get people to travel to you? I mean, do you pay them to come in or what? That is that that's me because that's you. You're you're well, yeah, the guy yeah, with the, the right. shitload of subscribers. Wade does not um Wade just does uh StreamYard. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So here's okay, when I first started, it, it was there was a lot of begging. Uh and you know, like please, oh bro, I really you know, I, like, I was begging, bro. It was it's really sad. So and then <laughs> you know, when I got to around probably around 50, 60, 000 subscribers. Then people start saying, yeah, bro, like, you know, you know, they, they kind of go back and forth, uh, you know, and usually, well, let's say 50 percent of the time they would come in because right. they think, OK, well. And I always tell them, you know, and the truth is, is that if you show up in person, we're, we get about 50, 60 percent more viewers. Okay. So it's like, look, what are you doing? I mean, is is are you pitching something are you do you have a book do you have it because if you're trying to get a bunch of views if you're just saying hey i want to come on your show i want to tell my story you know the views don't mean much to me because it doesn't no benefit to them okay fine we can do a stream yard but if you want a bunch of views if you're hoping to get a bunch of views and get found or get you know noticed or whatever you know the case may be if you're looking for whatever uh, to get your story out there then you really should probably come in and then of course if they say well would you pay i don't pay like I don't pay, I don't pay to gotcha. fly you in. I don't pay for your hotel. I'm not paying for anything. I think maybe one person I've reimbursed for gas. That that's about it. Um, you know, I can't afford to pay. And right. so, and and I get a lot of guys in the comment section that will say, <clears throat> and I think Wade's heard me say this before. You know, bro, quit being cheap. You need to fly these guys out here. And so I'll just break. I break down the math for them. And the math is this: if the guy comes here. And let's say he's going to get 30, let, let, let's, let's say 50,000 views okay. on a two hour podcast. That's roughly $600. Uh, so I'm going to pay $400 to fly you in and at least 150 or so plus probably have to pay for lunch or whatever. So roughly $600. I'm, I'm break even at this point. Now let's say you I do a stream yard with you and I only get 25,000 views. That's $250. So do I make $250 profit or do I break even or possibly even go into my own pocket? Makes like sense. I can't, I can't break even and I can't go into my own pocket just to have you in studio. I would love to have you in studio, but I can't do that. And it's way more time consuming. They show up early. We typically shoot the shit for 20 or 30 minutes. Um, they stay 20 or 30 minutes late. When someone's in person, you tend to talk longer, which is great. The videos are a little bit longer. I also have to have Colby come here and work all the cameras. So that's time, more time for him. Then he still has to go home and edit it. So it's a much larger production if they show up. And I, I want them to show up. I like them showing up, but I cannot, it's not it, you know, the the ROI, it's it's not there. Right. So, and everybody assumes that it is because they see like Rogan, and I'm like, bro, Rogan's numbers you, you are can't compare. nowhere near <laughs> no, what I'm doing. Right. Everybody has this big misconception that if you're on YouTube and you're interviewing people, you're making like thousands of dollars. And I'm like, no, that's, no, that's not no. how it is. It's, it's not. No. But like no. Matt said, though, if you got something you want to push, if you got a book, or if you have a movie coming out, or whatever the case, you know, anything, if you have a website or you're selling something, or if you have your own podcast, right? It's good to go on channels like him and get exposure, and that's you know what I did. Plus, you know, with the story that I had, he was the first guy I ever went on and told to. And okay. I flew to. I, I think I got tickets. That Black Friday had Breeze airline tickets for twenty five bucks uh, <laughs> per way, so it was like fifty bucks to go to Tampa. And I think I paid thirty each way for my bag, so I paid more for my bag to fly down there than I did. Right. Right. But yeah, I was like, I can't, you know, I can't pay. I just can't. 
You know, I want to, at some point, I, I hope that I'm, I'm in that position, but yeah, well, it, it's only been the last 500,000 views. Yeah. You can do yeah, that. Yeah. Right. I mean, it, that was so, so Friedman, when I, when I was on his show, he's, uh, he offered to pay. And at that point in time, I mean, he was getting three and a half million views right. for, for these interviews. Mine's at 5.1 right now. And, uh, he offered $600 and I told him to keep it. <laughs> <laughs> so that's what I did. But I mean, that that's an indicator of, you know, if, if someone like he can't really pay any more than that, you, you certainly cannot. No, no. Like, pe- I, like people think, oh, you know, I listen, I've had guys who think they, they're like, what, what do you bring in? You bring in like what? Twenty, thirty thousand dollars a month. I, what, you, what if, what, like, I almost hung up right there. I was like, this conversation is going nowhere. <laughs> like, this, so. Yeah, it's it's or or if somebody or if, when people say, well, you know, Rogan, Rogan, like I'm not, bro, I can't carry Rogan's bags, like I'm not Rogan, <laughs> like I'll never be. What are you doing? <laughs> so, you know, we're so far apart on this conversation. Um, yeah, but but I mean, it it has in the last six months, YouTube has been paying my bills, right, for the first time, which is great. Which, which, listen, which I'm, you know, I, I'm thankful for. I, I, I'm, I appreciate that. I'm, I'm, I'm thrilled because I was never positive that was going to happen. Right. Mm-hmm. The, the best part about doing my channel is that I really just have to shoot my mouth off and, and talk to other criminals, which is all I really like to do anyway. Yeah. So, you know, not that it's not still work, it's still work. Right. But, you know, I can sit down and talk to somebody. And if it's a good conversation, you ever, you ever, you know, you glance up to see how long have we been talking? And you're like, oh, my God, it's an hour and 45 minutes. <laughs> like, I thought it would was 45 minutes. So it's 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 such in, in that way. It's it's easy. I enjoy it. I like it. But I also schedule. I was telling Wade this um, at, uh, over the weekend. I schedule seven interviews to get four every week. Just because people aren't showing up or what? They don't show up. And, okay. and, and you know, keep in mind, first of all, I'm dealing with criminals. Right. You know, so, but, but not just. Not the most dependable people. <laughs> right. Well, you know, <laughs> um, it's funny. I was going to go, I was going to say, and, you know, like, for instance, I also speak with, you know, lawyers, but <laughs> I, I had a lawyer who's, he's rescheduled three times, but at least he told me like an hour beforehand. He's like, yeah, we're going to have to reschedule this. Oh, okay. okay. So, uh what you know comedians I, i've talked to well comedians with criminal records anyway so yeah they just don't show up they just you know and then two days later they call back and they tell me that somebody's sick or this happened it's like uh, i was at the hospital i don't hold that against people unless you do it multiple times like i'll give you once maybe twice if the excuse is good enough but like after the third time i'm like hey you know maybe we'll just We'll get back. I'll get back to you. And then I just don't get back. To you. Yeah. I always just, it's always like, oh, you know, my sister was sick and I went to the hospital. Would you perform surgery? Like, I mean, you, you <laughs> had your phone. Like, where, I don't understand. You could have texted me. Yeah. <laughs> so I get it. I hear you. I mean, I'm rooting for you. I want to interview, but after like, yeah, like you said, like after the second time, it's like, stop, bro. Like, this is no good. Right. Now you're just, you've wasted hours and hours of my time. Luckily, that's all I do. So I can. Um, you can always respond, you know, do an email or cut up a a, a TikTok. And see, but, that's the hard part about me is this isn't my, I have a day job. So right. I get off at 4.30 in the afternoon, come home, hop in the shower. And then usually I try to schedule about two, maybe three a week. And like you that's said, fun. sometimes that even falls apart. And then, and then on top of that, still got it. I need like an intern that just wants to edit shit and, and work on it and we'll, do it for free to just say, Hey, I work with that for guy. Free. No, he said for free. <laughs> <laughs> See Matt, I've got my for free. For or get him some air. Yes. I'll put him yes. on air. We'll interview him. My wife kind of sat up and I said, for free, for free. <laughs> oh. <laughs> you know, once the show makes 30,000 a month, then we'll pay you a stipend. Oh money. yeah. Yeah. We get into that kind of money. But at the same time, like when I have a short, Luckily, I saved all the shorts from even the very first show. So going back, like I already have kind of a mental idea of what I want to put in there with it, what steals, what's going to work, what area. So I also am the type of guy to where I don't know if I would trust someone else to do it like I like it or how I want it. So it's better that I do it. I just don't have like sometimes I'm just I don't get into bed till 
12, 30, 1 o'clock and I get up at five. Jeez. So I just, I mean, it's exhausting, but right. I do enjoy it. Like the editing okay. sucks, but I enjoy doing the interview. Yep. But you're not, you're not, you're also not sh- staying up till 12 or one o'clock because you hate it. Right. Exactly. You know? Yeah. Yeah. I do enjoy it. So I, I love it when uh, my wife will kind of like yell at me, like, you've been doing this all day that I'm like, this is work. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That's what I say too. I'm working. You know? I'm working. You think That's I like I'm doing working. this? <laughs> I had to tell that too. She's like, you're leaving again. You're going to Orlando. I'm like, it's for work. She's like, <laughs> Or words Orlando and all that doesn't go together for work. Like you know, to a Listen, con. I've, I've been up at like at like eleven thirty, one o'clock, eleven thirty at night, and she'll come down and it's even the worst thing is when she comes down and just walks over and and then just turns around and walks <laughs> off. And I'm like, man, I don't even want to go upstairs. <laughs> yeah, you might as well just stay like, and finish. I might, <laughs> that that couch is so comfortable. Like <laughs> probably safer. Yeah. Yes. Hold. So, so Matt, I got a question for you. So, like the clip, like the ones you've done for me of Anthony, and you mix in the clips from Goodfellas. I was always worried that that would be like a copyright strike, but on shorts, you don't have to worry about that. No, there's oh, no really? copyright strike on shorts or TikTok, um, or oh. Instagram for any of that any B roll. So nice. there's people out there that make full blown channels of just recycling clips from TV shows. Like nice. Sopranos is another one like that. Like that's like legally stealing. Yeah, legally <laughs> stealing. Like you're jonesing over. I can see it. Yeah, legally you're taking that and you're just putting. Fifth, sometimes it ain't even a full minute. It might be thirty seconds. But right. It's clips of shows. Now, it, music's different. Like if you take right. some music and throw it on there, right? Then they're gonna have a problem. But I, all my stuff I use. I have a subscription to Envato, but you YouTube provide YouTube. You go to your, you know, you go to your yeah. um your library, and it's all free stuff, right? Yeah, you know, and That's people are always like, "Oh, it's not, it's no good." Bro, there's tons of good stuff in there. Nobody's listening to music anyway; it's in the background, right? Yeah. It's right. just little instrumental sounds that, you know, but right. that's what you, that's what I use on all mine. And most of them are the same, depending on the tone. Like if it's something kind of sinister, you know, it's a different one, but if it's something mm-hmm. upbeat, you know, it's, it's a little something else, but yeah, that's all I, nobody really pays attention to the music or what it is. Right. You know, it, um, Ignacio. Mm-hmm. So, you know, he's done some with serial killers and stuff and I've thrown, you know, splatters of blood, right. Took it. They, 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 they the TikTok was like, oh, you know, strike, take this down. And they, they sent me something. I'm like, oh, my God. Like, I think the <laughs> blood splatter, like, it was, it was nothing. Like, <laughs> they don't, or if you show, like, a gun, like, I'd have a gun fall and it just, you know, kind of clack around and stuff. Like, it's in the, in, at the very end, it just fell on the ground. And cl- while it said, you know, YouTube in the back, right. same thing, showed a gun. It, TikTok's the worst. Okay. You know, I, 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 I'm more concerned about, about shorts uh you know i push I'm, I'm push shorts more than anything like really what we're doing is i always say tiktok oh yeah you do tiktoks really what we're doing is we're cutting up shorts and we're just sticking throwing them on tiktok because i'm more yeah. concerned about shorts you're going to get a lot more people from shorts so that that was my going to be my question so so most of your subscribers are coming from the shorts that you're putting out they are now yeah wow yeah, yeah. And you can see it, I think. I think I've seen one the other day. It was like, you got a subscriber from a short, from TikTok, yeah. I think. Okay. Yeah. You, you know, also, you can make money on the shorts. On TikTok like I, or the short, short, YouTube short? No, no, on the YouTube shorts. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've seen it. I've had a few that's made a couple bucks. Yeah, okay. it's not It's not a lot, but no. I've had I've had some that got like four or five million dollars, and they may, I mean, sorry. sorry uh, Damn. Jesus, <laughs> I need to borrow them. <laughs> four or five. Or, I'm sorry, like like five million uh, views, and they'll make two hundred dollars, two hundred and twenty, two hundred and thirty dollars. And I've had a, I've had this is on shorts. Like I've had a bunch that have gotten in the millions on TikTok, but my TikTok channel is not monetized. Okay, because I had a, I had a, I had a, a viewer. I hate to say fan. It's so obnoxious. <laughs> I had some a subscriber. I had a subscriber that contacted me, and I've had this happen a few times, where they contact you and say, "Hey, bro, I'll I'll cut up your stuff. I'll do your editing for free and for." And stop! It's not going to happen. You're going to do seven of them. Then you're going to then you're going to slow down, and then you're just going to disappear because you're right. embarrassed that you said this. 
and you realize, oh my God, I, I just asked, I just promised this guy I would work a part-time job for free. What was I thinking? Mm-hmm. So I, 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 those guys, anyway, I had one guy who came from, well, I've had two of them. One guy was a young kid. He cut up a bunch of shorts. He said, man, I just want to help you do this. And his thing was, I want to help you do this because it's something I think I might like to do in the future. So I thought, okay, that makes sense. Like I, if he does well, I could probably get him people. Mm-hmm. And and help him, so I, I feel okay with that. Right. And then he started doing it, and it it, it took off. And then I, w- I actually he slowed down, and so we were like, hey, let's you know, I'll I'll we'll send him some money. So we started. I had a buddy who started paying him, and because he was you know wants to see my channel grow, and it was still in the growing phase, and that went on for about three to six months. It got up to around one hundred and forty, one hundred fifty thousand followers on TikTok, and the you know, I was, it was starting to really grow. We weren't even putting up shorts and then he got a strike. And then a few weeks later, he got another strike. And then a few weeks later, he got another strike and they took the whole channel down and then he just disappeared and wouldn't respond, respond. Like I, we weren't mad. It's like, I'm not mad, or, but are you going to, and then by the time I finally did contact him, he was like, bro, like, it's just too much. I just can't do it. And I was like, okay, I get it. Just, you know, that's fine. Maybe he's a young kid, really nice kid. So then a little bit later, I had a guy from Canada who came along and said, look, I, I've been studying this because I watch all your stuff. I've been studying it. Can I start a channel for you? And I was like, yeah. And I told him what happened with the other guy. And I said, look, if it's too much for you, p- just tell me and I'll take it over, but don't just disappear. Right. And he said, I wouldn't do that. Look. And, and he, he was obviously, he's a, he's an old, not older guy, but he's in his twenties or thirties. And he's like, I'm not, you know, I'm not a young kid. I'm not going to get concerned and not, and just disappear. And uh, he ran it up to a hundred and, 10, 120,000 followers on TikTok, started a whole new channel. The problem is by the time he started saying, hey, look, um, my job's picking up. I really can't do this anymore. And he handed it over to Colby and I. And by this time, now the channel's making money. Um, and, and it obviously it always is, was making money, but enough money where it's like, hey, I basically can just do this right. myself. <laughs> and, and got to a point where Colby could hire somebody. So now we've got me making TikToks or shorts and TikToks. Colby's got a guy making shorts and TikToks. I got to a point where I was like six months ago where I said, look, Colby, if you can make this many TikToks every single month and I'll make this many, then I can't – I here's what I'm willing to do. I'm willing to do two additional interviews a week and we'll post – four pieces of content so we do one live minimum of one, try and do one live and three stream yards a week and i wow. think that will continue this slope and i'll be able to just do this full time and he said okay let's do that and that's what we did and it's been working so but the problem is now we're trying to monetize the tiktok channel and it was created in canada ah and you can't monetize it Ah, wow. So now we're having to start over. Jeez, jeez, right. dude. Like it's at 115 over 115,000 uh followers. So do you use the same videos from the other accounts like if your account gets banned or taken down like the first one? Can you reuse all those videos for the new one? Um yes, I I think we did reuse some of them. Uh, I'm not, I'm not really, I'd have to ask Colby. I'm not positive. I feel like some of them we did reuse, Okay. but to, but to be honest with you, I, you know what? I, I take that back. I think this guy did all of these by himself. The guy in Canada, I think he did all of them himself. I don't think he wanted to use any of the other ones. I think okay. we okay. have them, but I don't think he wanted to use them. Um, and listen, he, he, this guy, I mean, he, he knew what he was doing. Like he, he was actually making a different video for TikTok shorts and reels. Same oh, wow. video, but he'd alter them slightly. Right. Because uh, he, he was like, you don't understand. You can't post it like this because they'll they scroll to see the other platforms and they won't push it as hard. And he, he knew what he was doing because his videos have millions of views. Nice. Our videos have 10,000, maybe I've got a few that have a hundred. I've we do have a few that have millions, you know, five million, two million, but for the most part, they're 30,000, 5,000, right. 100,000. Like we're, we're not performing nearly the way he is. And I'll tell you what's really upsetting is when I spend three hours making a one-minute short and Colby's guy clearly spends 20 minutes making a short 
of the same, almost the same thing. And his get four gets 400,000 views and mine gets 5,000 views. And I'm telling you right now, mine was better. I used B roll. I used, I mean, it was flawless. And I'm like, and I've decided what the problem is, is it's the viewers. They don't, appreciate, <laughs> they're, they're the problem. They don't appreciate quality. They don't appreciate, you know, you, the, Fine Matt Cox craft. Right. That's what right. You so, so let me ask you then, am, am I that. better off? Am I better off paying someone to make shorts then? Um, mm, mm. It depends on how many do you want to put up a week? How many we do I need shorts, to put up a we week? Put up shorts, we put up shorts every day. But okay. if you were just, the whole thing is, look, I, I was love these guys. I'll talk to these guys and they're like, well, I'll put up one every day. It's like, hey, 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 wait. That's going to be fine for a week and a half, two weeks, but then you're going to start missing days. It's you're better off for the algorithm to say, Hey, I'm going to put up three a week. Okay. Because that's yeah. manageable. You think, that's Oh, I can do I'm more than to. that. Now, listen, you, I'm sure you can, but you're also going to go on trips. You're going to do this. You're going to do that. You're going to, you know, so if you could, you, I mean, you could certainly pay somebody, but you really have to kind of micromanage, micromanage them. Cause here's what they do is that you'll hire some guy that will hire someone from India right. to do it. And then the, not that they're not wonderful people. Um, <laughs> you, you, you felt the need to say that. I, I, because I'm scared. I'm scared of call, cancel culture. <laughs> so Yeah, that won't get you canceled at all. So, so um, the narration sometimes will be off. Like they won't catch like misspellings and stuff. And, and honestly, it's probably not imp even important. Right. But and then some here's what really happens is sometimes they'll throw them up and you'll watch the you'll watch it and you'll go like, that's not even a story. Like. I don't think this guy knows what he's talking about. I don't think he understands that he, he's not even really saying anything just now. He just threw a picture of me and the guest and we rambled a little bit and that's not going to way that's not going to work. So if you get a good guy, you know, and, and I have a good guy. Um, I have a couple of good guys that they probably couldn't. Then you pay to have like whatever pay to have three a week done or two a week right. done and then stay on them, like tweak them. Like they'll end up putting somebody, they'll put somebody on, they'll put somebody on your account that you can explain, look, I don't like this. Don't do that again. I like this. I like the way you did. And that guy will, will realize, okay, this is the way Brett wants his done. And he'll do it over and over, over again. Oh, okay. So yeah, because listen, and, and, and you can always give them like, you know, they were like, oh, just TikToks. So I was like, no, bro, no, do 59 seconds or less. And that way I can post it on all the, all of them because none of mine are one medium is not going to feed, uh, is not going to feed my, the funnel enough. I, I want to hit all three. Yeah. That's what I've started doing too. And you, I kind of took that cue from you when I made the short, cause I never could figure out with the shorts because it has that zoom in like, and the way my layout was on the, on the zoom it's never like centered on one person. So I, Matt, it kind of explained to me how you had to change the, you know, whatever proportion or whatever right. it is in DaVinci. I use DaVinci Resolve okay. for all my editing. And you just basically had to stack two videos on top of each other and then kind of change around the, the zooming and, and set it up how you want it. Gotcha. And that's, that's how I started doing it. And it, it works real well. And I do up under the 59 seconds. I, like he said, you can do a real, you know, a Facebook or Instagram, put the same one on all three. Okay. Okay. Just well, makes it a little easier. Time and trouble. Right, right. Now, uh, some of them for TikToks, I will go a little longer. If like the story's a key part, like we had, I had Tara Newell, and she was down there at CrimeCon also, and she was telling the story. That's the Dirty John. I don't know if you ever seen that oh, podcast. Right, right. I have, the, yeah. The TV shows. Okay, so she was like in detail describing the attack in the parking garage. I just couldn't get all of that in a in a minute or under in fifty nine seconds. So. Right. That one I couldn't make a short out of, but I did put it on Facebook and TikTok and Instagram because you can go longer than that. So in some okay. cases I'll okay. put them on like that. What, what's so funny is you'll you'll post them for 
a month and a half, two months, and you feel like they're getting a thousand, five hundred, fifteen hundred, two thousand. You're just like, this is never good. And then one day, <laughs> one of them starts to go. You're like, oh my god, I got it. It's just it's a hundred thousand. The next day, it's a hundred. It's it's three hundred and sixty. And the next day, it's four hundred and fifty. And then it's you're like, oh my. And then it, it goes and goes and goes. You're like, it's so, it, it's so unexpected. And it it will be some something that you're like, I don't get it. Like why, right. why this one? Yeah, I got you. But the it's first worth video doing. I ever had that got like a lot of shares, a decent amount of shares, was uh, there's a haunted house that got pretty popular that this guy was doing to where basically they could touch you. They could, you know, I don't want to say torture. That might be the wrong word, but pretty close to it. Like they could they could physically take you, duct tape your hands down, right. put you in a tub, dump ants or scorpions on you like it's it's pretty wild and it's called mccamey manor right and there's a there's a very creepy like trailer that they have out there for it i mean these they're like ramming rotten eggs in these people's mouths i mean it's, it's supposedly if you can make it through this house you get like 25 grand so no one makes it through no nobody's ever right. made it through and it's not designed for you to make it through. And that's what it, Russ was even saying. He's like, he didn't want to do the interview for a long time. Like I had to beg him. He's like, I don't like doing lives. You have to talk to people. I'm like, this isn't live, bro. It's just me and you. I have people take out what I say out of context. I'm like, I will send you the interview. And then you say, hey, this is good. So I finally convinced him to do it. And he's like, you know, I don't even charge people to do this. It's not like they have to pay a fee. And he was like, he even makes them do like a psych evaluation. He makes them do a physical. And he tells them straight up, like, you really don't want to do this. But yet people still do it. Right. And obviously nobody's ever went through. And he's like, you know, when they get in there and they realize they got to pull one of their fingernails out, they go, you didn't tell me I had to pull a finger out. And he goes, yes, I did. There's a 50 page waiver that you signed to do this. And he's like, Page 33, it says, may have to pull a fingernail. And that's the part that I pulled up on. I woke up the next morning. It had like some ungodly number of shares and all these comments of people saying, oh, he's just torturing. And I mean, just crazy, crazy shares. I was that's like, a wow. great Halloween video. Oh, that's when I put it up was Halloween. <laughs> that's exactly when I put it up. Have you I've cut tried that? to come on. Have you cut that into shorts? Not since then. No, uh, you, I probably you, need to redo it. Yeah, because right. Halloween's coming up. That might yeah. be get you a whole nother, um, you know, a, 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 a whole second look on, you know, there you the go. panel or whatever I'm trying to say. Yeah, no, uh, I, I uh, recycle it. Yeah, for sure. And that's <laughs> that, that would be a good one. And I don't know. He's not done a lot. Like he's he doesn't do a ton of interviews. He's real selective. I thought you a lot of a lot of customers no yeah no he does do a lot of, that's the I, thing is like he has he said women make it further than most men like they, he has a facebook group that he's pretty selective in who joins it mm -hmm. but they will go live when somebody tries to do it and so like you start with they basically i don't say kidnap that's the wrong word but you're basically like he tells you a spot to be this van pulls up, they throw like a bag over your head, they throw you in a van, and then it just starts. So it might start them putting you in this mud puddle. I mean, just all kind of crazy stuff. You just Google McCamey Manor and watch some of the stuff. Yeah, I, I think I would not sign on to that. No. Oh, no, no, absolutely I feel like, not. Yeah. I feel like it's, I, I, for some reason, when you said a van pulls up, I pictured old school with blue. You know, the van pulls up. He's this little man. They can throw him in the van. They take him. And, sorry. Blue, my boy, blue. Um, yeah. Uh, okay. Yeah. yeah. He's like, okay. All right. Yeah. yeah. No. Yeah. I'm never, never, ever would I do it. And I had a friend of mine that like tried to sign up to go through it. And I forgot the reason they give him, but like they are very selective in who they like. Is this the guy in Tennessee? Is this this guy? Yes. Russ McCamey. Yeah. 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 That's him. Yeah. I, 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 I read about it. That's oh, yeah, that's all I did was read about it yeah. for sure. I damn sure wasn't going to do it. But, yeah, it, it took a lot of, lot of like, jawing at him to get him to do it. He was real reluctant. Well, and, so, and I've not watched the interview, so so pretty good guy in the interview or just batshit yeah. crazy? No, I'm not, well, but he's pretty both, both. Okay. Yeah, I mean, he's he said he started, I want to say he was in the Navy, and he just loved Halloween, so he would decorate, like, parts of the submarine that they were on, like these things. 
and it just kind of grew. He wasn't torturing people then. Then <laughs> that that part kind of grew. Originally, I think it was in San Diego, if I'm not mistaken. And then it got relocated to like the Tennessee or, or area or wherever he's at now. But yeah, that's that's the guy. All the right. torturing part probably came like after he got married. Yeah, yeah, probably. 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 It's like probably, probably joined the military in. thinking he'd you know the enemy. Yeah, I, I think the last time I spoke with him, he was in talks with Eli Roth to do some sort of like deep documentary dive about the house. Eli Roth, if if any of you don't know, was the guy behind all like the hostile movies right. and a lot of the torture movies. Um, and they were in talks to do something. I don't really know where that got to or where it stands, but I know they were in talks to do something. And I had reached out to him, I think last October about coming on and doing another one. And, you know, we went back and forth and it was just, he was just really hard to convince to do it. Right. Cause he right. does have a lot of people that just claim that that's all he is, is like a, a torture lover. I don't know whether it's sadomasochistic or whatever that name is. Yeah. You got yeah. a bad rap. Yeah. <laughs> um, I mean, he's just misunderstood. Yeah. That's what it is. But there's documented proof you do it a lot. That's the that's the <laughs> thing. This guy's head's like in a cage and they just drop like these scorpions down. And I'm just like, no, nah, not nah, like, no. Nah, yeah. nah, no, I mean, nah. I'm not going to sign on to that to begin with. Mm-mm. You know, I don't even like being near a, a palmetto like you, bug or anything like that. No, I feel like if you sign on to it, you have it coming. Yeah. If, if you're going to, mm. and, you know. The terms of service, it's there. <laughs> Pretty clear. And I you didn't read that this? no one reads terms of service, but still. <laughs> so Matt, oh, Matt sorry, sorry. Question for you. So whenever you're doing how many interviews do you do? You said you schedule like five. I schedule like seven, like seven or eight, and I end up doing about four a week. Okay. But how many do you actually drop a week? Four. Oh, so you, you, sk- four you do four. Oh, yeah. okay. Wow. Yeah. So how many do you have in your reserve right now? Probably we probably have six or seven. Okay. Okay. I, I would You're- think I would think, yeah. Wow. So it's week to week finding yeah. people. Yeah. See, that's what I'm scared of. That's why I haven't bumped what well, to start with. I don't have enough time to edit shit like that. But yeah. I'm always scared of running on a dry route. So that's why I only really do one a week. And I've probably got about 25. Saved up, yeah, ready to go. Too, you have twenty five saved up. Mm-hmm. Wow, and I've got probably twelve or fifteen right now in the bank. I, I felt like go- I felt good that we we got like six or so. <laughs> I was like, yeah, we're we're good, we're solid. Yeah, but I mean, so, so and, and you 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 absolutely dwarf us with, with subscribers. So are we better off? And because I'm doing basically one a week. Uh, this week I'm doing two. Just that sh- that I've got like a twenty minute thing I put out today. But are we better off? releasing multiple episodes per week or not I, I would think i would so i would you probably you probably are yeah okay because that's gonna well you're not really not right this minute because you need to get monetized once right. you're monetized i would try and do brett basically all all brett does as far as i understand is is keynote speaking that's he's a yeah. keynote he's a professional right. full-time keynote speaker so you know you can do two a week Right. If you did two a week, so the way I look at it is, look, you know, once you get into it, and obviously, you know, Wade knows this, is that the the views mean ve- mean very little. It's the watch time, yeah. okay? You know, and people don't understand that. People are like, you know, they they well, you know, how it's like saying, you know, where people go, oh, you have a YouTube channel, how many subscribers do you have, bro? I'll take ten thousand subscribers. To, and get a hundred thousand views with thirty minutes of watch time on each one of them. Right. You can keep your 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 you can keep your subscribers. Like right. all the subscribers are is just ego. Yeah. So and this is same thing with the views. The views don't make me any money. If if I put out a fifteen minute video and it's getting three or four minutes of watch time and it gets a hundred thousand views, I would rather get. 10,000 views on a two hour video that's getting 35 minutes worth of, of, of watch time. Cause that's okay. gonna, that's gonna make, you know, that thing's gonna make way more. It's gonna make whatever, hundred, hundred and fifty dollars or something like that, as opposed to your hundred thousand uh, viewed video is going to end up making 30 bucks. You see what I'm saying? Right. Because the watch time's not there. So 
it, it's the watch time. So one, that's why whenever I talk to to fam- um, whenever I talk to guests, I always say, listen, you know, they're like, well, how long do you, do these go? 15, 20 minutes. I'm like, nah, bro, listen, like I need at least an hour. Now, right. if, I, if I, I said, I have to get an hour, if I don't get an hour, I'm, I'm upset. If I get an hour, I need to get an hour. Now, if I get more than an hour, if I get two hours, I'm thrilled. If it's more than two hours, I said, I'm absolutely ecstatic. So we're, we're, we're aiming for an hour. We're hoping for two. And they're like, okay, cool. And of course, a lot of people say, you know, well, man, I don't, I don't think my story is going to take an hour. I'm like, oh, it will. Because they're thinking, well, you know, uh, I robbed the bank. No, no. We're starting at the beginning. Right. Where were you right. born? You know, right. what were your parents like? Why'd you even, how did this even come about? Were you you can burn 45 minutes just to get to the story. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. So uh, it, it'll, it'll be 15 minutes before you're even, you know, you're in high school, you know, right. before yeah. you're doing drugs or you're whatever you're, you're breaking the law or whatever's happening, but we're probably, yeah, we're probably 30, 30 minutes, maybe 45 minutes before we've been talking about the first crime or two. And then See, if they have a long criminal history, it's a two hour <laughs> podcast. <laughs> when I done your show, I wasn't sure like how long you were shooting to go. And I didn't ask, cause I usually tell, told my guests, like, you know, I don't like keeping people longer than an hour because I know people have stuff they want to do, right. but you but care like, about not, people. <laughs> but I'm not just going to cut you off. Like if we're in the middle of a good story and you're rapping something, I'm not going to be like, all right, time's up. We could come back next week. I'm going to let you finish, but I don't like to go too much longer than that. I would love to, if they wanted to, right? Like Tommy Chong was like a perfect example, especially I know he's a busy guy. So he was at like an hour and 15, 20, and I'm trying to close it up. And he just kept going and kept talking. I'm just like, well, I'm going to ride it. If he's going, I'm going. Yeah. And, you know, he kept going. So some people I think are, they try to keep it around an hour. I, me personally, like if I'm doing only, I think when I went on Atwood, that was the longest one I ever done. We went three hours. Nice. Jesus. And look, he look, didn't even speak for the first two hours. Look, he was, listen, when uh, Wade sat down and started telling, he first he told me, he told me like, this is the first time I'm really telling the story. And I was like, okay, well, you know, let's, let's kind of start at the beginning. You, he, he was like, yeah, I feel like I've been, you know, I've done these, done the interview. I feel like I, I got it laid out. I feel, feel like I got it, bro. It's fucking beautiful. <laughs> like he just went and went and went. And I was like, this is, he's slowly methodically, you know, laying out what, what is, what is essentially, you know, one issue, you know, one thing that happened, right? Like right. we're talking about that one night. And yet he went from, you know, from childhood through, you know, his parents, through this, through dating his wife, through, and, and, and it was, it was perfect. Look, but it's got like on my channel, it's got like 90,000 views. That nice. is, nice. that's a lot yeah. for my channel. That's, that's a great video. It, it was, and it was great too. It was great. And then what, what is, uh, and you've got what, a couple, couple hundred thousand on Danny? It's a little over 200,000 on Sweet. Danny's, like 201 or 202. Yeah, I remember after you dropped it, you would send me like, t- I mean, I would look at it too, you know, periodically, but he yeah. would just be like 15,000. The next yeah. two days later, 20,000. A couple of days later, 30,000. He's like, this thing's got legs, bro. <laughs> and it was just going and going and going. Some dude out there, that was like the funniest comment. There were some good comments, but one of the funniest one, it says, this guy's beard along with Matt's hair is the most unstoppable combination. Ever. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, I, Jess, you know, Jess and I have talked about this all the time. We're like, we should spend like a day and go through all the comments and just get the hilarious with right. these guys are so sharp and they're, they're <laughs> so funny. They've got comments and, and I, and I don't mean ones that listen, these guys call me like T-Rex arms. They say stuff <laughs> like, they say stuff like, um, like if Matt, if Matt, what if Matt works out anymore? He's gonna have to start shopping in the adult section. You know, yeah, yeah. Look at Matt. Look, Matt's got a new Baby Gap shirt. You know, I mean, just they're you know they're they're. Luckily, I have. You can't really you know hurt me. But what's going on? Um. But yeah, uh, yeah. I was gonna say. Yeah, Wade, you got to go on some. I mean, oh, Brett, I'm sorry, Brett, you got to go on some more channels. I do. I you absolutely got to start funneling more people to your to your to your channel. Yeah, 
That's like the biggest way to ever. I noticed huge influxes when I went on Matt's and um, okay. and Danny's. Yeah, yeah that's. So, I mean, that's just what it takes. And, and there's nothing wrong. Like to me, if if somebody went on my channel and they mentioned their channel or they mentioned, like a lot of people will, you know, they they it's like they don't want to mention it. Like maybe towards the and they'll say, hey, if, if maybe at some point you could, bro. There's nothing wrong with saying, you know, they're throwing it in there and. It, every once in a while like hey man like oh man listen i interviewed this guy on my channel the other day like in the middle just keep throwing them in there throwing them in there like what do i care you know yeah. like you you want to funnel and tell these guys like put my thing in the in the in the bio um, in the description there. box yeah, i'm not good about saying that for some reason i'm not good about doing that do you, do you tell people to subscribe i you know i literally just started that on my own show you know, Wait, subscribe no. if you like it. Subscribe if you don't. <laughs> Bitch to oh me in the God. comments section. I'll even respond to you. Uh, yeah. You, you know, I, I wish I could remember to do it at the beginning. Right. You know who's amazing at that is, um, uh, what's his name? Oh, God. Uh, Graham Stephan. Graham Stephan has like a real estate finance show. Oh, okay. Uh, he hits it at the beginning, in the middle, throughout the whole thing. He does it over and over again. And I, I'm, I get so caught up with these, uh, with the interview and what's just what's happening, that I forget it. I, I have it great at the end, but let's face it, nobody's watching the end. Right. You know who who makes it all the way to the end? Anybody who makes it all the way to the end has already subscribed. Yeah, you're right. You know, yeah, I agree with that. Colby does that little thing, the little you know YouTube thing that shoots out and says subscribe, but I don't ever say it. Right. So I need to start saying it at the beginning. Well, that that's the cool thing about mine and Brett. You're probably say you can enter. I don't know when you started your podcast, because but like mine, I started the show in the middle of my ordeal. It was kind of like my oh, coping hell, mechanism. Dude. Yeah. So I'm able to interject that as the story progresses because that's when it started. Like, oh it wow. Was, in the middle of COVID, but nobody was doing anything. And that's when I started getting the idea, well, I might try my hand at this. So it's yeah. kind of part of the, the story because it was, that was a therapy, I guess, in a way, yeah, even though yeah. I wasn't talking about my stuff, I was talking to other people because I was a very outgoing person. So to be confined home, you know, for a while was, uh, was not easy. So that was a right. good outlet. Right. Well, so, I mean, Brett, are you going to start, um, interviewing people like once uh what, what are you going to try and start doing it you know i tell you what i, I, I i'm going to take the advice um so i'll still keep tuesday at 8 a.m then i'll do a sunday release as well um or should i should i not do that that close no i think i think as long as you're consistent listen it's it's just consistency right mm -hmm. so i'll do that i've i'm actually um I, i'm one of those guys that pays one of those indians who are fine people by the way right <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> I, I, hear I, you. Just, I just I just had 30 of these shorts delivered to me. Oh, OK. Uh, which, which I'm ha I'm fine with those. They, they look like they're they're good quality and everything. Um, so that, that was the idea is to start with the shorts as well. But uh, I, I actually I absolutely agree with you. Monetize immediately and then start putting out multiple shows a week. I can do the two interviews a week and then now. Now, do I need because I like to do my solo stuff, too. I like to complain about you know, fraud and security and walk people through things. Do I need to do the solo every single week or can I alternate on that? I don't, I don't think so. I think it's, okay. it, it's all kind of under the same kind of umbrella, you know, right. It's not like you're completely doing something completely different. Like to, right. to me, the crime and entertainment thing, like I, I felt, I always felt like when you did the crime and entertainment, um, Wade, it was like you were doing, you were doing crime and you were doing entertainment related to crime. But, you know, I didn't realize till you were talking about it over the weekend and today that you were doing like, you know, football picks. Mm -hmm. So that's, Wait. but if, if it's consistent, then it's consistent. You know what I'm saying? Right, like right. it's the, what? the algorithm builds up that kind of chart where it says, look, these are the types of people that are, are following his and they're consistently following him. So okay. it knows who to pitch advertisement to and mm -hmm. who to recommend advertise on your channel. And that's what it's, it's trying to figure out. Okay. So like one week it would be, you know, somebody like Tim McBride, who was a drug smuggler. Right. The next week it may be, you know, a guy that was in the mob. The following week it may be an ATF guy that went undercover in the Hells Angels. Then it might be an actor. Now, this actor more than likely probably played 
a mob guy or something along those lines. Right. And it would just kind of bounce. And then I've right. gotten to the point now where I try not to put out like the same exact same thing back to back. So I'll do, you know, maybe somebody from law enforcement, then a mob guy, then a movie star, then a porn star, whatever, you know, and just kind of mix them all in there. Then we've had some comedians on, we've had some wrestlers on. So it kind of encompasses everything. We've had writers on too, people that's okay. written about crime. Right. So it's always related to, you know, one or the other. And, and Brett, I'll say this, that would work out great for you because yeah. if you're doing solo shows, you wouldn't have to worry about having an interview every single week because you could always just fill in you talking about, you know, one thing sure, or another. Sure. I, I don't do solo shows. I don't feel like I'm that interesting for someone to do a, a solo or just tune in to listen to me. Well, you know, so I Matt and I were narcissistic. Yeah. So. <laughs> <laughs> but I agree with you, Wade. I've spoken with you. You're, you're, you're on point with that. Yeah. Um, so <laughs> he just, he just, so anyway, um, I was going to say, uh, you know who does really well with so you know the like the right the true crime writers that mm -hmm. you were talking. So when I do true crime writers and when I do some law enforcement, it, there, there's different ones. They, they don't listen. They with my guys, they just don't resonate. Like they'll get they'll get like some and and I, listen. I had um oh shoot the the guy from the the detective with that the detective that was on the night stalker case. Okay. Uh, I think his name is, I want to say is Glenn Gil. No, Gil, Gilcrest, Gil. Gil. So I, I seen that the other day. I right. watched that Netflix show. You it, had it it? Like, listen, he was great and yeah. he was great and he was amazing. And I, I, I was like, I was, I was just thrilled that he was, you know, when I was even interviewing him, he was so cool. And the, but the truth is it got like six, five or 6,000 views. And he did a great job and I, and, and it was a good interview and nobody watched it. And then I did, I've done some where I've interviewed like true crime writers and, the, and the, you know, true crime writer, he's going to tell the story. He knows what he's doing. He right. went for an hour and 45 minutes or something like that, hour and 30 minutes and did an amazing job. Nobody watched it. And, and yet if I'll get some guy who's a, a career drug addict who has nothing but knucklehead stories of being chased by the cops, getting picked up, getting, you know, just, just running through the woods, getting lost. I mean, ridiculous, just stories, 35,000 views. And you're like, and, and with like 40 minutes of watch time on a two hour video, which is insane. Right. And, and yet, so I, I, what I know is that I need to stick more with just criminals telling their stories. Um, and I, I plan on kind of like, cause I have stuff that's in the pipeline, but I really need to stick with that. And I'll tell you something that really guys love because apparently there's not a lot of it. And every time I do one of these guys, they get a lot of views is cyber criminals. Like these guys, they do they, like the cyber criminals. They, <laughs> they like, I've only done a few of them and all of those videos have gotten, and, and they could be stream yard. Like the guy didn't have to show up. It could be a stream yard. It gets 180,000 views. Right. You know, 90,000 views. Yeah, you've done well with Colby, I think. Yeah, Colby's got, I don't know if he's at 200,000 yet. Nice. Uh, but yeah, he he did he did great. And uh, there was another guy who was selling. <laughs> I, I don't even know what to say. What's going on over there, Matt? I, I've got. <laughs> I have like an audience, like the two people who never really want to hang out with me or, or spend any time. All I hear, I hear, I, I could hear Jess telling her daughter about all I hear is cyber criminal, cyber this, cyber that. Cyber that. <laughs> oh, she's upset. She didn't get to meet. Oh, and Wade. She wanted to meet Wade. Okay. There you go. Anyway. No, okay. But I agree with you, Matt, about that, because sometimes I'll do a video. And I think maybe it's just because it's interesting to me and that don't necessarily relate to my subscribers. Right. But I'll think, man, this video was so good. I know right. it's going to do well. And it doesn't. Like right. one of them that sticks out, I interviewed, there was a do, uh, a docu-series on Netflix called Bad Sport. Okay. And it would highlight different, like, I don't want to say tragedies, but de uh, debacles in sports. Right. And one of them was the guy that was kind of the mastermind behind the Arizona State point shaving scandal from like the mid 90s. And I got the guy 
who had the bookie in his pocket that had Stevin Smith throw all these games. It was fantastic because yeah. he was Stefan was betting with the campus bookie. And Stefan at the time was like the hottest basketball player in college. And he's into the bookie for like 15, 20 grand. He can't pay it. So that guy calls up, uh, I think his name's uh I forget it, Joe. I guess his name escapes me right now, but Joe something. He's in Chicago. And he's like, Hey, I got Joe Gagliano. That's his name. He's like, Hey, I got a fix. And with that, they masterminded, okay, you fix, I want to say it was two basketball games. You don't have to lose the game. Just don't cover the spread. And it went well. They pulled it off, no problem. And then the guy had some money in his pocket. He wants to bet on himself against, I want to say it was LSU. Of course, the guy's like, I let him bet because worst case scenario, I've already made, you know, half a million dollars. He only wants to bet 20 grand. If he wins, I give him 20 grand. If he loses, I know I got him on the hook for a third game. Right. He lost. He got a third game out of it. Now, by then, they're starting to attract attention. They're moving the Vegas lines when they play. And they can't just walk into one casino and bet a huge amount of money. He's telling the story to where they have to go to Vegas, two or three guys. His dad was held, like a bunch of people. They all got to go to 15 different casinos and bet 10, 15 grand a piece so it doesn't attract all this action going on the one guy yeah. or one team. And the first two games were perfect because it was around the Super Bowl. All the big money was on the Super Bowl. Nobody was paying attention. The other ones that started to attract a little bit more attention and they did a fourth game. And apparently in the middle of this fourth game, they were losing and the secret service like came in at halftime and was like, look, we know something's going on. We, we don't know the particulars, but if you don't come out and play like you're supposed to come out, there's going to be a lot of investigation going on. Wow. They come out and like blew the fucking doors off the team they were playing. <laughs> Everybody <laughs> lost money. So he lost 75% of what he had won, you know, over the course of the other three games. And then eventually, like, I won't even say it might have been a year later. It wasn't like immediately. All of them did wind up getting busted. One of the guys that was on the team, uh, he was either on the team. He was involved in it somehow. He gave up Stevan, and then that all led back to everybody else. But that guy, he was that cost him his going pro. Wow! And yeah, no but, one really tuned into that. I mean, it was done good, but not what I thought it was going to do. Okay, I thought. I mean, it was great. It was like one of my most like I was just I was glued to it, and I was happy that he come on because I didn't. When I see stuff like that on TV and those stories interest me, that's when I kind of become like a little mini PI. You know, right. I'll go try to track him down. And then I found out he actually had his own podcast, but it's not anything related to what we do. He wrote a book and it was called No Gray Areas. Okay. And that's his podcast name is No Gray Areas. So I was able to track him down and he agreed to do it. And then in turn, he was like asking me, like, how are you growing your audience? What are you? Doing? So I was able to kind of I was like, I, I'm not the best person to ask, but I kind of told him what I told you. I was like, I just promote wherever the the particular interview fits. So like right. mob guys and mob groups, Sopranos and Sopranos groups. I had a guy that was on the Friends TV show, put that in the Friends groups. A lady from Sons of Anarchy, put that in all the Sons of Anarchy, because those groups have 300,000 people in them. Right. So that's a lot of eyeballs that, you know, one little short might not reach. Right. And But he come on and told a fantastic story, and I just – to me, it was great. I guess to other people maybe didn't find it that interesting. I don't know. But like like he said, sometimes you just have one. My porn star has got the highest views out of everybody, like almost 50 something thousand views. I, yeah, I, like I, I'll interview like a, a producer or something. And I have tons of questions for the guy and I, I find him fast and I'm super interested in how that world works. And, you know, 8000 views. Right. So <laughs> it's you know, it's. So, I, I hear you. I, I so I mean saying and so for me because I I need this to do well and I I want to make this you know how I make my living you know I, I mean I'm obviously want to do you know keynote speak if I could just do this and keynote speaking I'm fucking thrilled bro right right so and right now I'm a, I'm right there I'm just happening I just need to keep it happening so I mean so, it, so is the key to this I mean you you said it the tire king people. Is it is it appealing to that every man that's out there, and yeah. and, and so therefore For me. you right, but even even what Wade's talking about, I mean, so you you talk about point shaving, but 
that's not really something that a lot of people can identify with. So is, I, it, is I, yeah. it getting guests in like that? I mean, I think it's for, for, I mean, okay. Yeah. Like, like Wade just said, it didn't do great. Like what's working. Like you got to focus on, to, to, in my opinion, right. You know, if, if, if you're saying, Hey, this is what I want to pay all my bills in a year or two, you know, which is the nice thing. That's the nice thing about doing this is like one, it, it's, it's a hobby that eventually becomes your full-time, you could, could become your full-time gig. Right. So for me, I have to kind of stop interviewing true crime writers. I need to stop interviewing, um, you know, producers, you know, those types of people and slowly start focusing on people that are, are, you know, former criminals and tell their stories and, you know, and then maybe slowly even start weeding out law enforcement that I'm speaking with, even though some of my law enforcement ones actually do pretty well. Mm -hmm. But it depends on the type of law enforcement person. I had a guy come in person the other day. He worked like 20 years on um, uh, in in the auto theft. And and yeah, yeah, he was great. He was great. You know, he had nothing but one crime or one uh, uh, auto theft story, auto theft ring, auto theft this, all that, just one after another. Uh, And he came here. He drove here. Uh, He actually gave me someone else that uh, that I'm supposed to also uh interview uh that was one that got at the last minute got um uh it needs to be rescheduled that's the uh, underwater recovery people or whatever yeah. Nice. yeah i got them on the line too. nice yeah yeah the guy does it for the police he's he's found like i don't know if it was five or ten cars for the police like bodies in the cars oh, wow. like he does what do they call yeah. it Ma- magnet fishing all yeah, that free he does it for free yeah, he doesn't even charge. I asked him, I was like, so is this something you just kind of started and it became your full-time job? He's like, no, nah, we do it for free. I'm like, I don't understand. What are you I saying? Don't know if, I don't, I don't know. If I, yeah, yeah. I was kind of <laughs> like, I don't really know if I'm diving down there and doing that for free, but mm. it's not even uh, like you started as a hobby, like you're just snorkeling and you found a Buick in the bottom right. of the ravine. <laughs> well, Vic said he's got a, he is, bro, he is, he's got great stories. He's got great, he's got some great stuff. And so, Yeah. But I mean, that that's what I think I need to do because I, I need to, you know, it can't all be just because I'm super excited about right. this. Because if if people that are paying your bills are saying, hey, that's not something I'm necessarily interested in, then I, I, I you know, to a degree, I need to cater to those people. Yeah. And it's not like oh, they're absolutely. asking me to enter. It's not like I'm having to interview somebody I don't want to interview. I just need to focus on what what the masses are focus or are, are, are want me to do. So I mean, so and and I've I've seen some of your your recent interviews. I mean, the aliens. So is it is it just keeping in touch with whatever's trending at that point in time? You bring somebody in to talk about ET. You know what happened with the ET thing? So I was locked up with a guy named Chris Marrero. Okay, and Chris Marrero believes in pretty much every wacky conspiracy theory out there. And I and the great thing about Chris is that he's not a jerk about it. It's not like if you disagree or you even make fun of him, he'll get upset about you. Like some of these guys are so serious. They'll, they'll get pissed. Like, and, and where Chris giggles and laughs and he, he knows that, you know, people think he's a little kooky and that I think he's kooky. And so I contacted him and said, Hey, let's, let's do something on sovereign citizens. Cause he's a sovereign right. citizen. And so it started with sovereign citizens and it kind of moved into aliens and then we did another one, and the sovereign citizen thing didn't do very well. But the aliens did, and you can look and see, hey, people watch this alien part. Right. Like that's nuts. So, and then of course I had to apologize to him, like, because I mocked him constantly about the alien stuff in prison. And then I get out and you've got the Navy showing, like, oh yeah, we got, we've been seeing these things forever. This is <laughs> insanity. We got these things over here. We got tapes videos and i was like oh man so i'm having to, i'm on i'm on the video going look i want to i want to tell you i'm sorry about that he's like yeah i told you so then we did one on aliens which did really well i mean for you know chris chris is a uh uh you know chris is you know his his he, the whole time he's like so i'm talking to this guy and he's like i'm like chris can you move back like, what <laughs> What I'm looking for the thing, and I'm like, oh, it was just horrible. But I'm laughing and the whole time and mocking him, joking. He's like, "What you? Oh yeah, that's funny." Okay. So anyway, and 
it did great. It got like 50, 60,000 views. And then I did another one and it got with him and it got like 75,000 views. Okay. He's lovable. He's just a, a big, lovable teddy bear. Uh, did I do another one that I don't know? I, I, I think I, I need to do another. I think I've done three total with him. Anyway, so then when I did that, T- uh, Tyler got me another guy that I really honestly wasn't that interested in, in doing. And mm-hmm. I did his. And it got like 80,000 views. And then some other guy reached out to me and said, hey, I've reviewed this alien video and I've done this and this and this. And, and I thought, okay, I'll, I'll do this guy. So, But he was very adamant about it. Like people don't realize like you, I get inundated with emails and, and text messages and you know um, whatever, DMs, and right. I can't keep up with them. So the guy that, the guy that sends me one and says, hey, yeah, you know, hit me up. You're, you're probably not going to, no matter how amazing the story is, you're probably not going to get a follow-up. But the guys that are constantly like hammer me two or three times, Hey bro, what's up? Hey man, I, I don't know if you missed my email. Hey man, it, it really think you should do that guy's getting on. Okay. So that's what this guy was. And I put him on and I think it's got like two over 200,000 views. And it's this grainy video that he's talking about that were, they call it an alien interview. And it's, 10 or 15 years old and he's right. he's I mean, it was a long vi- it's it's it did amazing like, i can't believe it like i don't think it looks real at all i think it looks like puppets but he's got a whole theory and uh and it, yeah and he did well and it it was great so okay so yeah so yes okay it's not but it's not like crime and aliens okay i did a couple alien videos crime criminal crime and aliens. aliens crime yeah. and aliens coming, crime and, coming and aliens. <laughs> you know before long you're going to be the new, new coast to coast that's out there you keep going like that. Man, that I, that, you know, and, and the problem is I, I don't believe really, well, that's, this is the problem. I don't really believe in conspiracy theories and yet I keep being proven wrong. That's true. Like, well, that makes for the better episode. D- do you do any research at all on guests before they come on? No. no <laughs> he was shaking his head like, yeah, yeah, yeah. no. No, not I, don't, I, I talked to him briefly on the phone. I don't want to hear anything from him. I, the only thing I want to know is if they can talk. Yeah. This and is your good. opinion. To me, this is their opinion. <laughs> right. I, I, I'm always shocked. Guys will show up with like, they'll show up with with all documents and showing me pictures and, and here. And did you read my indictment? No. Did you read? I, I sent you those two articles. <laughs> I think I I think I highlighted one and listened to about <laughs> and, and had had like Siri read it to me. But then it then there was an ad or something and somebody called and I got busy. But yeah, I know you. I'm sure you're good. I got I got distracted by that porn star that Wade was talking to. <laughs> yeah. Periodically, periodically I'll I will read like an article or two. Mm-hmm. Or if it's a really interesting case, like like Colby, um, uh, which is the the Brett doesn't know this, is a cyber, this guy that was selling uh he was selling drugs all over the I'll just say that over the uh uh internet or dark web or whatever it was and uh about two he's got an over over two hundred thousand views and i did look at his stuff like he sent me his i don't know what he was sent me he sent me his pre-sentence report like he's got a social security number on everything (laughs) and he's gonna be gone for five years he obviously didn't research you very much (laughs) wrong guy (laughs) so uh yeah, so like he, you've been busy, been busy while you've been locked. Up. I mean, people wow. don't realize like, that pre sentence report. It's got like your mother's maiden name. It's got your date of birth. It's got your social security number. <laughs> like very trusting. Very yeah. um, trusting. We know who he didn't research for sure before he you sent you all that info. But See, I used to do that heavy in the beginning, though. I would research probably way in it. It sounded very scripted. It was scripted. I had certain questions I wanted to hit. Right. And then I had one set up and I interviewed a guy who was on the Sopranos, but he was an actor. He's been in a bunch of other stuff. And like, I asked like the first couple questions and then I just never went back to it. And we had like a general conversation and that was when it finally clicked of like, okay, it's better like this, let yeah, them yeah. dictate it and then just flow with it. The only problem is every now and again, sometimes you get a guess that don't understand what you're doing. And so when you ask a question, okay, well, what all did that entail? Uh, we just did this. I need a little bit more than that. You got to give me a little bit more. You know, they're, they're very short with the answers. Oh, I so get in those that. cases it can be, dis- it can be hard. I get right. that all the time. The guys that who, 
you know, you know, and I, I, I went in the bank and, you know, yada, yada, yada. And I came out with the money. Whoa, 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 what do you mean? Yada, yada. Well, what, what happened? What's yada, yada, yada. Yeah. You know, we, we do what we do. And I came out. No, no. What, 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 what do we do? <laughs> what did we do with to do? What, what did we do? I got the money. You know what I'm saying? No, no, you're going to need. And then, then they'll start to go. Oh, okay. So I pulled the AK 47. I'm like, now we're talking. Yeah. Well, you know, fired What's a couple around. Everybody dropped to the ground. I jumped over the counter. You know, people were screaming and I'm like, okay, now, now you see what I'm saying. All right. Yeah. Then they, they go through the, then they go through it. Right. Um, yeah. Cause th these guys don't want to hear, you know, they can get that from a, from a newspaper article. He robbed the bank. Do you get most of your people now, Matt, to just reach out to you through email? Like you're not to the point to where you really go searching for people now, right? I don't. I don't have time to search for people. So yeah. what happens a lot of times is that uh, people will con guys will contact me and say, "Hey, you got to talk to so and so." It's like, what? What do you mean? Who? Look, if you want him to be on my show, and you really kind of like try, and, and I get it, they're trying to be supportive. Mm -hmm. Like they're not saying, "Hey." You know, they're not being jerks like they're, they're saying, hey, I think this guy would make a great interview and they're trying to be supportive. Well, then reach out to that guy for me, like try and do some of the legwork like this is this is difficult. Mm -hmm. And and, you know, so, so for instance, I had a guy the other day who said, hey, he sent me a video and said, you should interview this guy. And I said, yeah, bro, that'd be great. Do you know how I can get in contact with him? I said, I don't have time to chase him down right now. And he came back. He said, yeah. Ah. Here's the email for the guy. Here's this. Here's that. So I sent someone else an interview because he didn't have the guy's direct information. Sent, I'm sorry, sent this guy and another YouTuber an, an email saying, hey, you had this guy on this episode. I'd love to talk to him. And then listen, two, but probably two or three days later, I get a phone call from the guy. And the guy says, hey, man, you you reached out to this person. He gave me your, inf your information. You said you want to interview me. Yes. I interviewed that guy today. Nice. So that's great. It's like if, if and some of these guys literally, they're like they'll go back and forth with me on text and say, "Man, when are you available?" He's available next Tuesday and next Thursday. He's got the Saturday off if you want to do all day Saturday. I'm like, this guy's great. Yeah. You no, know, I need help. I'm not at that. I'm at the cusp of where you can, you know, I'm I'm six months away from being able to have somebody that can really you know, really track these people down. And, and Tyler does my, my booking agent does to a degree he does, right. but he does it for a lot of people. Yeah. That was like my biggest problem in the beginning was finding guests. Right. And then two, not having an established channel. A lot of people I think were reluctant to come on because nobody wants to give up an hour of their time for someone that, that most people, and you guys probably know this, that, decide they want to start a podcast if they're not really invested in it they think it's all fun and games and then once they realize it's a little bit of work involved they might do it for a month and then it just right. goes away right so That's i understand people don't want to give a whole lot of time if you're really new and that was my biggest struggle but once i started getting you know a little bit of a track record that was like my email hey i'd love to have you on i've had this name this name this name this name and it would kind of give them, okay, well, maybe this guy's got a little legwork about him. That's and nice. that, but I had to do it all myself. And people were like, how are you getting these guys? You have an agent? I'm like, well, it's a, you know, it's a real complicated process. So I open up the Instagram app, and I just type up a little message and hit send. And sometimes they reply back. Sometimes they don't. You'd be surprised even the, how many people will actually reply to those. And I'm talking like guys that were prominent stars and TV shows. And yeah, you've had and some, stuff like that. So nice. You know, you've had some some big time, you know, big names, people that I obviously, you know, know. So which yeah, most of them through Instagram, just a little chat back and forth here, there, yonder. And and it don't hurt that I'm a fan of their work either. You know, they can right. tell who's a fan and who's not, who don't have a clue what they've done. And I, I'll throw out a movie name that, you know, the average fan might not know. Like, for instance, I had Robert Lasardo on and he's a Mexican actor who's been in everything. He's been acting since like the early eighties with Richard Pryor. And he was in the mule with Clint Eastwood. If okay. you ever seen Nip Tuck, yep. uh, the show Nip Tuck. So he was the guy, uh, Escobar. Right, right, was right. There the whole time that was making the girls smuggle like the drugs inside their, you know, 
and he was in there through the majority of that season. And I had him on. And I mean, it was just, he could bounce through all these movie stars that he worked with. I mean, he worked with everybody. He's got like 200 film credits. And he was in the last movie that Tupac was in. So I made a short with that because he was like, you know, the last time that I saw Tupac, the scene, he was laying, you know, shot dead in the movie. And he's like, two weeks later, I get a phone call that he was shot in real life. And he's right. like, that was my last image of him on set. Cause he had to walk in there and find him. And he was like, that was my last image of him. And then two weeks later, you know, he's, you know, that happened to him in real life. Right. So. Yeah, okay. So. Well, do you guys want to uh, wrap this up and maybe next time, like next month we, we cover something like actually like maybe structuring interviews or talk yeah. a little bit about, you know, um, you know, <laughs> Not that I know all that much, but, but, but I think it's something that we, you know, we could kind of talk about how to, you know, going about different interviews. Cause I think that's kind of interesting. I agree. Yeah. Cause it's, it's cause I'm realizing, you know, <laughs> it's difficult. Like I try and stick with a basic format, but people get off topic and how do you bring them back? And, right. and that sort yeah. of thing. Yeah. You have to, sometimes you have to work on that direct indirect approach. So, so what happened now again, right. kind of politely, bring them back to it. And I'll take this opportunity, Brett. I'd love to have you on my show too. Yeah. Let's, let's do, let's make that happen. <laughs> and I'll bring you on my show and there we'll we talk go. about something. And that's <laughs> how I was done folks. Cross collaboration. Yeah, right that's it. I was going to say too. And, and Brett, like if you do know anybody that is in the, you know, cyber, you know, I don't want to say arena crime arena, you know, that you come across like, yeah, do I you definitely want cyber guys. I mean, I love, I do because all those guys do, really well okay. on my channel yeah i've got yeah. um albert gonzalez just recently got out i know he's not doing any interviews for probably six eight months um but there's a couple of people i can connect you with um as far as you know you might want to talk to this ted durbin guy if you can if you can get the tech right with him he lives in an rv and uh he's the guy that served 32 in, in angola but he's he's i mean he's amazing to talk to angola so where's that that's Angola is Angola the Louisiana is State Penitentiary. State it is 24,000 acres large. It's entirely self-contained. So everything that you eat, wear, whatever you do in the prison is made in the prison. Mm. Yeah, it's crazy. I hope to never find out anything yeah. about it. Yeah. So <laughs> Angola is uh, more people will, 90% uh, of, the, of the population will die there. Um, that's where you go to serve your life sentence right there. It's, it's absolutely insane. Yeah. Matt, I'll tell you this quick story before we hop off here. My right. boss asked me this week. He was like, did you go up to crime con? I said, yes, yeah. it was pretty cool. He said, did you, did you meet up with that Matt Cox guy? I said, yes. Yeah. As a matter of fact, we did. We had dinner and I showed him some of the pictures and I was like, I was like, if you're a fan, bro, like I'll get you just write down your social security number and everything and give it to me and I'll pass it off to him. <laughs> He's like, oh, no, no, I don't think I <laughs> <laughs> makes you think I don't already have it. So yeah, right. exactly. there you okay. go. Right. <laughs> but wait, I'll, I'll, I'll shoot you an email in the morning and uh, okay. get on that show. I'm looking forward to that, man. Yeah, sounds good, man. Right. Looking forward um, to it too. Matt, you're outstanding as always. Hey, I appreciate you guys watching. Do me a favor. If you like the, the video or the whatever we just did, <laughs> uh, do me a favor, hit the subscribe button, hit the, uh, like the video, the bell thing, <laughs> leave me a, leave me a comment in the comment section and I, we're going to leave, I'm going to leave the links or the channel links to Brett, uh, to the Brett Johnson show and to crime and entertainment, which is Wade show. And I appreciate you guys watching. Thank you very much. See ya. And do you guys want to do an, an intro and an outro? I'll just tag mine on afterwards. I, I mean, <laughs> unless you want yeah. me, unless you want me to do an intro. Don't you do an, don't you do a, an out? Uh, don't you do one? I do. So, so what I, the oh, intro. you're saying you'll do it later. You're yeah, saying you do I, it hell, later. If you want me to do it right now, I can do it right I now. Don't know. No, I didn't even think about that, Wade. You, I'm <laughs> sure you can do it too. I, I usually have a little regular intro that I'm not even a part of. It's just an intro for the the show. That's right. They're just tack it on to the front and let it there roll. There you go. Yeah. So, well, so I'm good. I'll just like take that. this file. You send I'll, it to me. Just... I'll leave your stuff on at the, at the end too, because. <laughs> You know, yeah, because that's pretty not? funny. Right. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Uh, all right. I appreciate you guys coming on. All right. Matt, I'm you're outstanding, you. truly. Thank you for bringing us on.